Hello. Hey, Russell. Good evening, Rhonda. Hey, I know. I'm playing with my lighting. Hey, 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 Russell. How's I'm it going? Well. I'm well. Good. You look nice tonight. Thank you. Appreciate that. And looking forward to it. Finally getting on with the festivities. Yeah, me too. I'm happy I got to the post office this morning and got all those things off. Yeah, that'll be nice. A lot, of yeah. those, I mean, a lot of those people get them in a yeah, couple of days, especially the ones in Missouri, probably. Yeah, things tend to come pretty quick. I think um, just a couple of days normally. So most people probably have them by Monday. Yeah. I think your checks came to me in two days. I think they did, yeah. I told you what day they came, but I'm pretty sure it was two days. I thought it was funny you sent me your check. <laughs> Well, I figured what the hell you were going to mail the. Oh, yeah, I didn't mail you certificates anyway. It's not like it was a problem. It was then just it'll money. be like, it's like, wow, look, I've got Lucky, money. Look, I got money. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah. <laughs> Excitement. Do you know how many people uh, Diane got signed up for open mic? I did not think to ask her. I really don't. You know, kind of when. It, something is somebody else's bailiwick I just try to leave them to it for the most part and it just didn't come up and I, I didn't think to ask her I know she'll have at least one because I'm reading <laughs> yeah yeah me too so that's two sure okay it's her and probably her too so there's at least three of us I'm sure there's more than that too but well I think I got the uh, uh well I got the secretary and the vice president jobs filled I saw that. That's really excellent. I'm still working on someone to take over contests, but hopefully we'll find somebody who is uh, keen to do it because they'll know they have some help and a system already done. Yeah. I've made it as about as painless as I can. I've got it all down to a fine polish at the moment. <laughs> well, I know, you know, I kind of felt like I had the, uh, the treasure thing down at least where it worked for me right yeah, I, went, I went through this when i got this job i inherited this red suitcase uh -huh. and it weighed about oh, at least 60 pounds and uh, i hesitated to open it for a long while i bet uh, but it had it had records back to like 2013 maybe uh -huh. uh, but some of the those folks back then uh you know, they made copies of everything. And if they would, somebody would mail them checks, they would, they would make copies of that. So there's hard copies of everything. Well, Russell doesn't do that, you know. No, <laughs> like I was going to say, if you don't need me to send you that actual receipt, I sent you a picture. I figured that's probably okay. good enough. But that's perfect because I mean, they would have, they would have put that in a folder somewhere. I know. know. Yeah. See, to me, like, there's, yeah, what a waste, you know. I mean, it, that's what I think. It's just like we live in the electronic age. So let's let's do it some mm -hmm. fashion, you know. And um, so I did it, you know, in a very fairly simple manner. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, and it, even if somebody was going to uh, steal a check or something, they wouldn't make copies of it and put it in a folder. Duh. No. You know? That would be like, oh, I'm gonna write myself a check for three hundred dollars and then make copies of it. So there's proof. <laughs> oh, they're smart. <laughs> and and uh, you know, anybody that wants to can get the uh, log on in the password and look at the bank account or you know. Right. All I do is just uh, I document the details in another sheet. You know, because when you look on the bank, it will say deposit seventy bucks. Well, that could be. You know, two twenty dollar checks and a thirty dollar check. So you and it could be for anything. It, it could huh. be, uh, you know, dues plus uh, raffle tickets plus the writing contest or whatever. You know, 
Yeah, so somewhere you have to have the detail that says who's this money from and what was it for? Right. Yeah. Hey, hey, yeah. we got some more coming. Hello, hello. Hi, Diane. You're muted. Yeah, you can unmute yourself. I have people come on muted in case there's, uh, you know, crazy noise when they are coming on. <laughs> I'll be right back. I just got to step out for 30 seconds. Be right back. Okay. Okay, did that fix it? Yeah, there you go. Now we can hear you. That's a pretty piece of furniture behind you. Oh, thank you. We're going to sell everything at auction, pretty much. Oh, are you? Yeah. Well, we've I'm already sure. got more antiques than we know what to do with them. What are you selling at auction, Miss Diane? I was out for a second. Well, yesterday we sold our house in Missouri. <sighs> so um, we're going to be in Florida full time. Oh, okay. I've, I've had some some weepy. We miss you. How long did you own that house? 23 years. Wow. Well, that's a long time. And there's a big job in front of us trying to get everything resolved and out of here. <laughs> I have no doubt. <laughs> so, um, so are we just hanging out? Can I, um, can I yeah. mute myself again and do some reading and? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just doing, this is just the, you know, uh, lobby is open. The people can mingle kind of thing. We're not starting until seven. And Diane, I'm so sorry again. I didn't send you my bio. I just, pff, God. <laughs> I got it pasted. No problem. I know, but I still feel badly. I don't mean to make uh, any extra work for anybody. <laughs> Believe me, I can imagine what your week has been like. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, not only does the, all this owl stuff, plus I took over the raffle for Marguerite, which is fine because she's been ill and I'm happy to do that. But, you know, that did add another layer. I've also was uh, studying and taking a licensing test to, for selling insurance, which I did yesterday and passed so I was dealing with that this week and like right today like right now my, my brain is just so tired <laughs> like, I can't even rub two thoughts together right now and get a spark <laughs> well, let's see hi Veronica and Veronica! Hi. you're muted yeah unmute yourself when y'all come in just go ahead and unmute yourself when you want to talk and Diane you're free to do whatever but I'm glad you're here can you hear me now no. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. There you Can go, you hear me? No. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Good. 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 Thank Hi, you. Anna. You're muted too. And hi, Cindy. Hello. Hey, hey. hey. <laughs> that That's looks like quite you, a Sandy. collection of dueling pistols you have there, Sandy. <laughs> Those are all A bomb bottles. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Oh, so every one of them save on. Hmm. Awesome. How about that? Okay. I are, you, are you big into history, Sandy? Yes, I love history. Me too, me too. I'm in the uh, historical society down here and I wrote one article for the, uh, for the quarterly that's gonna be, it'll be published next March. Um, but anyway, I really enjoy it, and I'm on the cemetery board, and uh, it's amazing that some of the things I've found out about the people who are buried in the Goshen Cemetery, and uh, I'm going to do a story on one of them as well. We have a very old cemetery down here that's been uh, bulldozed and traumatized, <laughs> and the graves go back to the Civil War and beyond that. And we've been down there trying to fix it up and trying to help get people interested in it again. But well, it's a shame when people do that. <clears throat> yes, there are some around here that have suffered the same fight. Russell, where are you? Where am I located? Yes. Uh, I live uh, just outside of Goshen, which is about uh, 10, 12 miles east of Fayetteville on 45. Okay. And where do you live, uh, Ronnie? I'm just curious. I live on the southeast coast of North Carolina. Oh, really? 
Yeah, on the edge of the Atlantic Ocean. I, I lived in the Missouri Ozarks for 10 years. And that's what got me connected with owls many, many years ago. Yeah. And I just I just reconnected uh, earlier this year. And I'm happy to do so. I'm just thrilled. Well, we're glad to have you. And uh, um, I used to have to go to North Carolina quite a bit on visit, but not very much uh, to that part of it. I went up to uh, Wilkesboro a lot. Oh, yeah. That's and, near the uh, mountains. Yeah. To Monroe a few times. Uh, I was I visiting it. chicken plants of all things, but uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. but it's beautiful country out there. I really loved it. Well, we're on the flats out here because uh, because of the ocean. So um, we're right on the Cape Fear River. Well, I don't live on the river, but that's where we're located. About I'm about four miles from the river. Wow. So how far are you from the coast? And uh, but I lived in Forsyth, Missouri, for ten years. Diana, can you can you hear us and talk tonight? You're muted last you're I saw. Welcomed, you're welcome to unmute and chat with us while we're getting all set up and visiting and all, all that here. I'm if you see me fiddling in the screen changing, I'm just you know making sure everything works like it's supposed to. I think you may be unmuted now. You are unmuted now and muttering. <laughs> <laughs> we hear you muttering. <laughs> oh, I don't care about that. Well, I don't care about that either, but we do hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Twitch. Hey, kitten. Uh, so, Veronica, what genre do you write? Well, right now I am working on a southern novel since I, I, I grew up in North Carolina on a tobacco farm. So I'm, I'm going back to my roots and I'm writing a, a southern story through the eyes of a little girl that doesn't see all the rotten threads that go through the south, but she witnesses a lot of things. And um, okay, that's basically so what Leave it. Wow, that sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. How far along are you on that project? I about a about 110 pages on my my rough draft. And you've also done a lot of nonfiction for yes, those who don't know. And so, the have you done very much fiction before or no? Back in the old days in the Ozarks, I did. Um, okay. Uh, Jory Sherman was my mentor. He was also my oh. next door neighbor. Oh, and, uh, I love him. And Jory and Charlotte both. And um, so I worked with Jory on some Westerns. Mm -hmm. But more recently, the nonfiction has been the nuclear power generation business from which I um, retired. And so I, I contracted out and did a lot of manuals, which actually are fun when you do all the research. So I enjoyed that part of it. That's in the past. I'm going back to my fiction route. That's awesome. Diana, oh, you're, can you hear me? Yeah, you're muted, but I'm just going to ask what's going on in your world. Well, I, uh, I think I already told you this but I had the cover story in Wild West for this oh, month's yeah. issue. Yeah. So anyway, eight pages, eight page spread, plus a two page spread on the, it was on the Santa Fe Trail 200th anniversary, which was actually last month. And, and then I had a two page spread on the Indian perspective of the Santa Fe Trail. And then he used a photo that I submitted uh, and I did a short, then I did a short piece also on Michael Mount Martin Murphy, who was the uh, celebrity spokesperson for the trail for, mm. for the 200th anniversary. So, yeah. I like it. Took me about 10 months. 
Yeah, it took me about 10 months to do that with all the research and everything, but I enjoyed it. Yeah. I know that's why I write humor because I don't have to do that much research, you know. I can just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's just true. make it up as i go along yeah and then yeah. i write a lot of uh fantasy and you know urban fantasy and paranormal and there's well there's there are certain levels of truth in there too but not the same level of research uh-huh yeah yeah that took lots and lots of research well i'm going to do a non-fiction piece on this guy named bf little who was uh, he's buried in Goshen, and he was the first uh, Republican sheriff of Washington County. And the way this oh. occurred was that he was, uh, Arkansas had uh, at least one union outfit in the Civil War. And of course, oh, after yeah. the war, none of the former Confederates were allowed to hold public office. And so oh. he, he was actually appointed by a, a general who was stationed in Memphis. He was appointed sheriff. And uh, there were some interesting things that happened in his uh, tenure. Uh, there was a big uh, uh, kind of a, a, a family feud or two, kind of a Hatfield-McCoy incident that happened. Hmm. Uh, yeah. People were getting killed and stuff like that. And then they would take them to court and the court, <laughs> and the court didn't do anything about it. And so then the other <laughs> family yeah. would take revenge. Uh, pretty fascinating stuff, hmm. actually. Yeah. So what are you going to do with that? Well, I'm going to put it in the uh, uh, Washington County uh, Historical Society it has a quarterly uh, thing that comes out. Uh -huh. And, you know, I might submit it to some yeah. other places, too. Do you have some recommendations? Um, well, some types of maybe is there any historical magazines in Arkansas or in the South? Yeah. That that might be that might fit in with yeah so, yeah the period yeah. was uh he served from uh 1868 to 1872 uh-huh and okay uh, he uh he developed uh while he was in the service uh, dysentery hit him real bad and it bothered him the remainder of his life and was one of the reasons that he resigned uh was because of health. Hmm. Uh, yeah, but rather, rather interesting guy. Uh huh. Yeah, when you start digging up and things back then, just some really crazy things went on that you wouldn't hardly believe happened. Yeah. Yeah, in this cemetery I'm talking about, there's a sheriff that's buried there, and he was so hated by everyone that uh, I believe it was a Negro shot him and they congratulated, uh, congratulated him on killing him. Wow. And he was not punished. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's how hated he was. <laughs> hmm. I've got a whole bunch <laughs> of records that I found on that cemetery and the people in it. Sounds like somebody I wrote about in the story. <laughs> <laughs> not missed yeah. and not at all. <laughs> and yeah, cemeteries are. Where was that, Sandy? Where is he buried? Uh, do you know where Neosho, Missouri is? Yale Cemetery? Neosho, uh, Missouri. Uh, oh, Neosho. No, no, I do not. Mm -mm. Okay, you know where Joplin is? Near Joplin. Yeah, yeah uh, I know where ne the town of Neosho is, yeah. And well, Joplin. if you head past Neosho toward Goodman and toward Arkansas, there's a road called Double A. We live off of it. And when the main highway stops, there's dirt that starts this county. And if you go a couple of dog legs, you'll find it. It's way down in the woods. A couple of dog legs. Hmm. <laughs> Don't you know that's how it's here, Billy? So those are how you get someplace. <laughs> Duke, you're looking quite dapper this evening. Hey. You're, you're muted. muted. Mm hmm Talk to us. You're muted. Yep. I, I figured that one out. There you uh, go. 
<laughs> you saw that stupid little crossed yep. out microphone. Yep. Mm -hmm. you heard this microphone. <sighs> I, I know heard it's this annoying. Was a, yeah, I heard this was an award ceremony happening tonight. And Very I, soon. I figured I'd better just try to look the part. You look dashing, just dashing. Uh, yes. That's what I'd like to be, dashing, dashing out the door. Out the door, <laughs> down the road, a couple of dog legs to the left. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, my. Well, this is going to be fun. I know. I'm excited. Yeah, I kind of felt like uh, being as festive and ready for a little party tonight. Yeah. Well, as soon as I get finished announcing the uh, contest uh, winners, I'm going to fetch myself a beverage of choice and mm -hmm. uh, join in. Oh, yeah, me festivities. too. <laughs> <sighs> Diane, how many people signed up for the open mic? Let's see. We have a total of one, two, three, four, five. And um, I was going to read them off just to make sure that I had everybody. Um, it, but these are all the bios that I have. Okay. Right. Uh, yeah, so I have, well, we don't have everybody here. But um, anyway, Russell is reading. Joni Roberts is reading. I'm reading. Kimberly Green is reading. Um, and Rhonda is reading. And Russell. I said yeah, Russell. She, she oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, it's good to we see everybody. The, the dynamic duo just logged in, logged in there. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, ladies. You're muted. You're muted. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're here. We're here. <laughs> okay. Hey, hey, hey. Ron, did, did you get the email I sent you two, three weeks ago? Yeah. Okay. So you know that uh, by paying dues early, you got a discount. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not kidding. I'm not just making <laughs> this stuff up. I need a break after the week I've had. <laughs> mm -hmm. Maybe even longer than a week. So I took your extra money and applied it to our raffle tickets. How's that? Awesome. Thank you. So now your chances to just jump way up there. And there are some great prizes. I, I tell you, Marguerite did a great job of, uh, of uh, getting things donated uh, for the raffle. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't remember what all is on the list, but it's a pretty lengthy list. I know that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was very impressed with it. I missed what she said. What'd she say? She said she was impressed with it. Oh, awesome. It is a nice list. I saw it. Oh, yeah. How is Marguerite feeling? I haven't heard anything. And Bonnie, how are, how are those two ladies feeling these days? They're hanging in there. They still have their issues, of course. But um, <clears throat> Marguerite went back to work. And, um, of course, that knocks the stuffing out of her, which one can understand. Mm -hmm. and um miss bonnie is certainly still having a rough go of it she's hoping to be here at least for part of the evening awesome and so that will be good we'll hope i said i hope she could come at least for a little while yep well you all are looking mighty smart <laughs> <laughs> i guess that's a good word right yeah i comb my hair Dapper. <laughs> That's kind of not yes. giving him. <laughs> What'd yep. you say, Russell? I'm deaf. I can't hear. <laughs> What's that? Oh, she said you brushed your hair. She's telling I me. I yes. my hair, yes. Yeah, Russell yeah. had brushed his hair. That's what he'd said. I did too, but it didn't help much. <laughs> Veronica, did I hear you say that you were from South Carolina? North Carolina. No, ma'am. North Carolina. Uh, we Don't mix the two up. No, mm -hmm. ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I'm the Carolinas. Them's fighting words. Look out. <laughs> uh, but actually, I live about 40 miles north of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, in North Carolina. 
Okay. We're over near, we're over near the coast. So we, we like to vacation on Bald Head Island. Are That's you... where I live in the South Fork. Really? Oh. Really? Yes, I do. So the next time you're here, please look me up. We'll go have a cup of coffee at Fort City Java. Love to. Love to. Not sure that anyway. we're going to be there, but maybe hopefully soon. Good. Good. It's a great place. It is. I live about eight miles from the ferry slip. Do you really? Mm -hmm. For bald yeah. head. Yeah. Well, we, when we drive, sometimes we have to spend the night in Southport, um, mm -hmm. just depending on what time we get there. Well, sometimes when we fly, because the flight gets in too late to catch the ferry. Yeah. We have a new hotel in Southport. It's called uh, the River Hotel in Southport. It's a lovely, lovely place right on the river. So if you have to spend the night over, you might want to check that out. The River Hotel. Okay. Good to know. <sighs> well, it's good to see everybody. I know I've been gone for a while. Well, it's good to see you too. Mm -hmm. Yes. And how are you doing? I'm actually doing uh, much better. Um, it's a, it's kind of a work in progress. We, uh, Duke, we sold our house yesterday. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. So, so we'll be full-time Floridians as of the end of next month. Mm -hmm. Good deal. Good deal. That's what you've been shooting for. So I'm awfully glad you're getting that. Yes, yes. I'm still going to be active. I'm going to, you know, still going to be a member and attend as many conferences as I can if we ever get back to meeting physically. <laughs> I'm, I'm really hopeful that the uh, spring meeting is going to be in person. Uh, by that time, I'm hoping that we'll all have figured out what we need to do to protect ourselves uh, and we'll be able to be big boys and girls and do what we need to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hopefully we won't have a sneaky variant and you know that like we've had with Delta, which kind of turned the tables on what we knew yeah. before. So yep. hopefully that will work itself out. I'm supposed to go somewhere in uh, February and I'm a little anxious about that being possible, but I'm hopeful. <laughs> where are you going, Rhonda? Oh, uh, it's uh, in Denver where I actually used to live there, but there's a conference for a couple of days and I thought I'd take an extra day and I still have a couple of friends out there thought I'd try to have supper with them or whatever that'll be fun uh -huh. yes Diane I don't recall do you and Ricky have an RV oh no <laughs> oh well maybe it's time to get one <laughs> I think we'd be able to afford the gasoline <laughs> Well, I, I think that the way you do it is uh, you use the RV to go and do research at each mm -hmm. of the conference sites. And then you write off the yeah. RV and all the associated expenses and the food as a business deduction, because after all, you, there you are, you're doing research as an author, a published author. So, yeah. yes. Now, I think at some point you, you have to make money from being a public. <laughs> That's a well, detail. They give you about five years before they expect you to do too much. So you'd have a little while, I think. <laughs> and I imagine if you could just show an honest effort and say, well, you know, I'm making some money, just not as much as I'd like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I have to tell you that Rick and I just released our, well, it's been a while. It was in the summer, but we didn't really promote it real well. Um, but we released an audio book of Christmas on the High Seas. And he narrated the male voices and I narrated the female voices. And it was- Diane! It was really a lot of fun. I got, like I love audio books. Why did you not tell me this before? Where do I get it? Well, well, we're getting ready. You can get it on Amazon. It's available for audio, Audible if you have it. I do. Oh, awesome. I so, did not know. I missed that. I'm so sorry I missed that. No, no, you, you, 
<laughs> we really didn't promote it. And um, so we're, we're getting ready to, we're gonna, um, you know, do some, some sales and some, yeah, we're getting ready to really promote it. Yeah, we've been selling a house. <laughs> oh no, I know that. I just, you know, I love audiobooks. That's my favorite way to access books just as a blind person. But uh, yeah, so I'll be all over that. Well, Rhonda, Melissa's Fate is available as an audiobook also, and it's on Audible. Cool. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you if you had any others. Yeah, those I, are the two so far. <clears throat> cool, cool. Well, hello, Summer. Hello, Marguerite. And iPhone Polly. I don't know who iPhone Polly is. I can't see all of your face. <laughs> there we go. Welcome. Annie, we haven't had a chance to say hi. Hi there. Hi there. <laughs> Hi, Larry. I'm, I'm, I'm wrangling kids three in the background, so, so I'm on mute. Folder, check your updates. Check your promotions. There's always got to be someone who didn't think they got the link. Um, yeah, I got a message earlier from Linda Runebaum that Mm -hmm. I mean, I literally the link went out three times. So I told her, check her updates, her spam, you, you know, know, all that because. I didn't get mine and it was in my junk folder. Right. That happens sometimes. It so. took me a while to find it. Mm -hmm. I forwarded Rhonda. the link to Linda. Rhonda, oh, good. Kim, Kim says that she sent it to Linda also. Oh, good. Okay, good. Because that's good. I'm glad Linda wrote someone else besides me. <laughs> <laughs> Just because when you're running the con, it's really hard to go, okay, let me do this and do that and send this. And, and, you know, yeah, while tell me about it. <laughs> while you're also trying to run this, the actual meeting that you're doing. So, yeah. <laughs> Hi, Lisa. Welcome. Hi. Hey. Hi. Uh, I have a question. Um, I, I did buy the $5 raffle ticket but I don't have anything to show for it. Just my PayPal receipt. Is that okay? Russell, would you like Russell, to did respond I get that to that? From you? I, I don't recall. Uh, yes, uh, we did receive that. And, uh, oh, yes, Manzini. Yes, um, I, I had okay. to think. Okay, cool. Yeah. I, I didn't know. All right, thank you. <laughs> hey, Lisa, do you, do you live in Arkansas or? No, I live in Hollister. Oh, in Hollister. Okay. Hollister, Missouri. Yes. Yes. Well, it's well, nice you, to meet you. Thank you. Good to be here. Yep. Yeah. Russell, glad you're here. Do, do you think you could explain how the uh, raffle is going to work? No. Uh, no? I, think I can, though. Rhonda or Marguerite <laughs> could explain that. I, I, all I, I can. Did was, Rhonda, all I did can. was record who bought tickets. Yep. Yeah, Rhonda, he's, go just, for it. he's just recording uh, and we're about to get started. But the, the short answer is, you know, if we were in a meeting, you'd get a little ticket and it would go in a bowl or something. And what we're doing this time, because we're virtual, is um, I have a running list and uh, it's everybody has a number. So if you bought three tickets, you might be number, you know, 10, 11 and 12 or whatever. And uh, we'll use a random number generator to select the winners. So okay. I do have everybody. Lisa Manzini is your last name. I had to think of who it, who was what, but I've got everybody. I kind of had to take over for Marguerite because she's been sick. So, you know, in an ideal world, you would have said, gotten an email that says your numbers are, you know, 12 to 15 or whatever. But in the ideal world is not here. And I, I'm pinch hitting last minute. And so I didn't get that far. But there, there is a lovely list of everybody's names and tickets and stuff like that. So we have everybody and Russell and I are real good about checking with each other every two seconds. <laughs> it feels like today and oh, making man. sure all that stuff gets in there. And I appreciate you very much for doing that, Rhonda. Oh, hi, sweetie. Oh, it's my pleasure. I'm sorry that you are feeling poorly, but it's my pleasure to pick up. So, you know, I know normally we would have sent all email. It's just been a, a lot and unexpected things. And so, but we're doing the best we can with that. But you'll get your tickets. Don't worry. You'll get your entries. Oh, thank you. 
I have Rhonda, 200 and some names in the list. Rhonda, I just bought tickets about 20 minutes ago. I hope that counts. Well, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there eventually. Okay. Okay. okay, I'm going to mute everybody out at the moment because I'm actually going to get this party started here. <laughs> and so um, if you all could give me just a minute or two to make, um, make this happy dance work with all the technology and the things that go with it, well then- I need to get to my email. Yeah, we will get started soon. So, and then we'll get the tickets worked out later that anything that was just bought a minute ago, we'll get that later. No, I, somebody's. Okay, I'm going to mute everybody, hopefully. No, that did not work today. Mute all. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And while Rhonda is getting us all set up there, uh, does anybody know the difference between publishers and terrorists? Terrorists. Well, you can negotiate with terrorists. Uh, <laughs> and yeah. how many mystery writers does it take to change a light bulb? It only takes two. One to screw the bulb almost all the way in and one to give a surprising twist at the end. <laughs> Ah, last cute. but not least, how many cover blurb writers does it take to screw in a light bulb? The answer is a vast and teeming horde stretching from sea to shining sea. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Good. I'm, I'm glad fun. somebody got a chuckle out of it, but I'm done. Oh, I'll not uh, yes. move anymore. <laughs> I did get a chuckle out of it. Let me, uh, there we go. Okay, so we are now going to get this party started here. And I'm just so very excited to welcome everybody to the Ozarks Writers League 2021 Owlies. We're very excited to have everybody here and very much um, looking forward to all of tonight's festivities. And if I could get this <laughs> screen to go down, that'd be great. <laughs> Can you stop, please, YouTube? No, we can't do that. That would be impossible. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> okay, there we go. So much for trying to have a little bit of fun for half a second, right? You know, yeah, the tech is interesting. Um, I'm Rhonda Del Baccio, the vice president of OWL, and very shortly you'll be hearing from our president, Duke Pennell, and we will be um, giving these awards to people. And I've been the contest coordinator this year too. So sitting on all this knowledge of who has won what has driving me crazy. And I can't tell anybody, of course. So, but before, uh, before we do that little piece. Oh, well, you're just gonna be a bear, aren't you? Yeah, okay. Before we do that little piece, I thought you might enjoy something about the joys of trying to write. <laughs> I'm not seeing anything on my screen. Oh, you aren't? Okay, well, that's oh, not no, nice of it. No, neither. either. Okay. Well, then, that you know how sometimes the tech just says, I am not feeling it right now. So, give me a second, I will attempt this little party again. There. Yes, that's checked right. That's checked right. 
And now let's see if you feel like uh, I see anything there yet? Oh, yeah. finally. Yep. There we go. Okay. Are you trying to compose? Uh, it's not really working today. Uh. It's flowing! It worked! I'm writing again! <laughs> We're thankful for that fun little bit and thankful for YouTube that we get to share those things and I hope that gave you some uh, fun little ideas. Anyone ever have trouble with trying to get your juices flowing? <laughs> Nope, my house is super messy right now. I'm very creative. <laughs> well, I am excited to turn this over to our esteemed and awesome president, mm -hmm. Duke Pennell, to share the awards with everybody. And so what I would suggest being on Zoom is if we could let Duke give the whole winners for one category, and then we can scream and go cray and then let him do the next category. Then we can scream and go cray all in everybody at once for that category and take it away, Duke. All righty. And I'm not muted for once. All right. There's no, you. you're not muted. <laughs> okay. I wish everyone was here that had won awards. Uh, and anybody who's not here naturally, they'll get their check and the certificates and all of that other stuff in the mail. But let's get to it. First, memoir. Creative nonfiction. Honorable mention goes to Young Tragedy by Diane Yates. Yes. Third place, My Mother the Rabbit, Annie Lisenby Smith. Second place, Black Monday, Faye Gwynn. First place, And I Always Will by Rhonda Del Baccio. Yay! Hey. Congratulations to everyone. A note from the sponsor. This was a great batch of entries and it was hard to choose the winners. Please let everyone know that it is important to follow the rules because when a judge is holding the top five or six in her hand, even little differences count. I had to knock points off and even disqualify some because a specific rule wasn't followed. It makes me so sad to disqualify or drop out of prize range a well-written interesting story because someone didn't take time to follow the rules. Okay, next, nonfiction article. Third place, Lydia Pinkham's Powerful Potion by Diana Wett. We lost Duke's audio. Duke, we lost your audio. Sorry, so. yes, got that. So did you did uh, anybody hear start, anything about nonfiction? Start over with the nonfiction because we heard just the one honorable mention, but go, just start with that. Thanks. Okay. Nonfiction. Uh wait, the honor you heard an honorable mention. Okay. 
uh, that would have been Young Tragedy by Diane Yates. Is that correct? Diane, wave if you heard that one. Okay, thank you. Third place was My Mother the Rabbit by Annie Lisenby Smith. Second, Black Monday by Faye Gwynn. And first, And I Always Will by Rhonda Del Baccio. So now there, yay, everybody, yay. Okay. <laughs> Note from the sponsor, this was a great batch of entries and it was hard to choose the winners. Please let everyone know that it is important to follow the rules because when a judge is holding the top five or six in her hand, even little differences count. I had to knock points off and even disqualify some because a specific rule wasn't followed. It makes me so sad to disqualify or drop out of prize range, a well-written, interesting story because someone didn't take time to follow the rules. And we all need to remember that. Okay, next category, nonfiction article. Third place, Lydia Pinkham's Powerful Potion, Diana West. Second, Victoria Woodhall, the first woman to run for president by Larry Wood. And first, Cheating the Grim Reaper by Billie Holiday Skelly. Yay, everybody. <laughs> Notes from the sponsor. Hard decision. And there were no honorable mentions given because all would have tied for that. She, my judge, said they were all impressive entries. So you guys did good. Okay. Crawford Humorous Anecdote. Third honorable mention, The Last Laugh by Billy Holiday Skelly. Second honorable mention, One More for the Road by Russell Gayer. First honorable mention, Hot Potato by Marguerite Stever. Third place, Big Sister's Revenge, Joy Keeney. Second place, Oops by Faye Gwynn. And first, An Ozark's Preacher by Annie Lisenby Smith. Congratulations, everyone. Next comes a Crawford Poetry Prize. Third honorable mention, Life's a Holiday by Vita Boyd Jones. Second honorable mention, Goodbye Old Friend by Diane Yates. First honorable mention, Singing Life by Rhonda Del Baccio. Third place, Death Comes Slowly by Rhonda Harvey. Second, In the Middle of the Storm by Annie Lisenby Smith. And first, This Warrior by Bonnie Tesh. I wish Bonnie was here to hear that. Next comes a haiku. Honorable mention, Stream Salvation by Billy Holiday Skelly. Third, The Nursing Home by Russell Gayer. Second, Daddy's Hand by Joy Keeney. First, Stellar by Lori Freeze. Good job, everybody. Next comes Humorous Short Piece. Honorable mention, Never Anger a Goddess by Rhonda Del Baccio. Third, FEMA Responds to First Flood by Diana West. Second, Scamming the Scammer by Annie Lisenby Smith. And first, Elvis, Bigfoot, and a Bicycle Built for Recycling by Bonnie Tesh. Yay, Bonnie. Next comes Flash Fiction. Third place, The Best Geocache Ever by Annie Lisenby Smith. Second, My Last Days by Kelly Kirby. First, Marie's Music by Bonnie Tesh. Congratulations, everyone. Applause, applause. <laughs> Our next category is inspirational romance. Second honorable mention, The Journal by April Brock. First honorable mention, Becky's Valentine by Marguerite Stever. Third, The Summer of His Life by Larry Wood. Second, Strength from a Shattered Heart by Annie Lisenby Smith. And first, When Our Time Has Come, by Rochelle Wissoff Fields. And I wish Rochelle, Rochelle was here. <laughs> yeah, where is she anyway? Jeez. I don't know. <clears throat> okay, next category. I didn't see that coming, the O. Henry style story. Honorable mention, Order Up by Rhonda Del Baccio. Third place, 
The Old Lady by Veronica Burnish. Second, He's a Rebel by Larry Wood. First, A Marvelous Sunrise by Carolyn Giamanco. Okay, note from the sponsor. First, definitely had the wow factor. Oh, Henry would have been proud. Good job, everyone. Yay. Next comes a paranormal Western. Honorable mention goes to The Ghost Picture by Larry Wood. Third place is Pink by Diane Smithy. Second is Doc Eli by Terry Alexander. First goes to Devil's Gap by Joy Keeney. Congratulations, Pete. Yay. Next is a Western. Speaking. I'm sorry, Duke. If the Go person ahead. who was squeaking, going through doors, and could mute yourself that would be awesome because i tried to mute all and it just didn't work so you're you know you're kind of being a little disruption if you could mute that'd be awesome thanks okay Peace. next category western short story i judged this one and people this was tough everybody who got mentioned gets mentioned here was really really good third honorable mention buckskins and lace by russell gayer Second honorable mention, Showdown at Short Creek by Larry Wood. First honorable mention, Inspection at Cat's House by Rhonda Del Baccio. Third place, Waiting at Home by Billy Holiday Skelly. Second place, The Cards You're Dealt by Carolyn Giamanco. And first place, Love in the Old West by Marguerite Stever. Very good job, everyone. Next comes Write the Old Stuff, Historical Fiction. Honorable mention goes to Silverwood Asylum, Joy Keeney. Third place, Dancing in the Shadows by Annie Lisenby Smith. Second place, The Christmas Angel by Billy Holiday Skelly. First place, Black and White in Living Color by Diane Yates. Congratulations, everyone. Note from the sponsor. Looks like some folks took an actual event, tweaked it slightly, and sent that in as a short story. I really want people to learn to write a short story and reflect the time period in which it is set. Sigh. On we go. <laughs> <laughs> Next category, Jeannie's First Love. Third place, Somebody Special, Rhonda Del Baccio. Second place, Orphan Train Girl by Larry Wood. First place, A Lady Indeed by Carolyn Giamanco. Good job, everybody. Yay! All right. Best first page of a novel work in progress. Second honorable mention, Love's Fate by Diane Yates. First honorable mention, Deadly Memories by Larry Wood. Third place, The Quest by Lori Fries. Second place, Crystal Carrier by Terry McDermott. First place, Baby It's Cold Out Here by Russell Gayer. Congratulations. Yay! Best fiction book of 2020, Impossible Fate by Diane Yates. Congratulations, Diane. <laughs> and best nonfiction book of 2020, Midnight Assassinations and Other Evil Doings, A Criminal History of Jasper County, Missouri by Larry Wood. Congratulations, Larry. And that is all of it for this year. And it's been a really good year for writers. You've had an opportunity and you've done well. Congratulations to everyone, what, no matter what place you won, you did good. Rhonda, I think I'm yes. going to turn it back over to you. All right. Whoops, I need to stop your video. Hang on a minute. <laughs> All right, just, I got wait, it. Wait, wait. That was not my intention. <laughs> I'm good. No problems. Okay, there you go. We're back. I'm sorry about that. I was just trying to unspotlight you, and I was like, oh, no. Oh, I'm so excited for everybody. And literally, the check's in the mail because I got to the post office this morning. 
and I did that. Uh, so the check's in the mail. <laughs> You'll be getting your checks and your certificates very soon. Duke, thank you for being uh, gracious enough to read our all of our winners. And uh, I'm sure it was fun for you to be able to see who won everything too. Because I didn't even tell Duke up until I had sent him the list. So. <laughs> So a big thank you to everybody. And uh, that concludes our wonderful owl leaves for this year. We do hope that next year can be in person instead of virtual, but I'm at least grateful that we have the technology, even if it's been a little buggy tonight, at least we have the tech to make all of this work out. Bonnie so, Pesh is here. I see oh, her. I see her. Bonnie, Bonnie, did you arrive soon enough to hear that you won some stuff? She's oh. muted. Yeah, she can and unmute her. She's muted. She was muted. Now she's just gone. <laughs> uh oh. I'm here. Bonnie, oh, did you hear is. that yeah, you, hear that you won some stuff? No, I did not know that. Okay, well, with everyone's forbearance, I'm going to look through these real quick and find the places that say Bonnie Tesh. And uh, Bonnie, your uh, Crawford Poetry uh, Prize that you entered, you won first place. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And Bonnie, your humorous short piece, Elvis Bigfoot and a Bicycle Built for Recycling, that won first place. Yep. Oh my gosh. And Bonnie, the flash fiction, Marie's music, that won first place. My goodness. <laughs> and let me see. I don't know if I'm done yet or not. I think that's, I think that did it. So yes, poor Bonnie. She only won three first places. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well I'll tell you much. what, if, I, uh, I'm if you sorry. don't get a chance to, uh, to read this story about Elvis and Bigfoot, um, that is really a, a classic piece, and I, that, that one made me laugh out loud, and uh, I really enjoyed that, Bonnie, and thank you for entering in the contest and sharing it with us. Uh, uh, it just, the whole idea of Elvis and Bigfoot living in a trailer house. <laughs> it's inclusion was a pretty it was a hilarious premise so uh thank you for submitting that well that means a lot coming from you russell <laughs> and i will tell you i read your crawford poem and i was like i would be really surprised if that didn't be in the money somewhere it brought tears to my eyes it's beautiful well thank you rhonda i i really appreciate uh the judges liking my work thank you uh -huh. Well, I'd like to say, too, that I appreciate all the sponsors uh, that stepped up this year and, and donated money so that we could have these contests and, yes. um, and have these prizes that we're having here tonight and uh, rewarding writers for doing great work. So, yes, uh, thanks to the sponsors. Agreed. Yeah, they are, and I'm sorry, I should have said that before, but yes, the sponsors are just so awesome. We don't have a contest without it. And how this works in OWL and probably everywhere else is if we don't have a sponsor, we don't have that category. Now, somebody said, oh, well, I would like to participate in so-and-so instead of sponsoring it. I'm like, well, if we happen to find a sponsor for that, then you, then you can do that. You know, <laughs> um, and then if we don't, we don't. And so that's how it comes about. And people can sponsor any type of a category that you may choose for that. Uh, you know, um, like for example, Nancy Hartney decided this year to sponsor uh, Write the Old Stuff. And uh, that was, as far as I'm aware, her first time sponsoring. And then Duke has been generous enough to sponsor many times. And, and uh, uh, Bud Hanks has for years sponsored the uh, O. Henry, and he did, you know, just everybody, uh, Vita sponsored and uh, Billy Skelly did. And it's been really wonderful to have so many generous people because all of the money that they give in goes right back to you guys. And then the contest fees and other things just help us run OWL and, and bring you guys hopefully great conferences that'll 
that will help you out because everybody here is a volunteer. <laughs> so and we just appreciate all the entrance. Um, we had fantastic uh, over 1600 in prize money this year, which is just fantastic. And we had, uh, I believe, 30 participants this year. Actually, last year in the heart of the pandemic, we had a, just a few more than we did this year. You know, it just, I guess, an test to how life gets a little busier and crazier at times. And uh, But we're just so grateful to have everybody who participated, both sponsoring, entering, uh, you know, sharing it with your friends. And it'll be exciting when you get those big envelopes with your checks and or certificates. A couple of people got a certificate, not a, a check, but most people got both. So I'm very excited. Well, thank you, Rhonda, for uh, being the chairperson of this contest. I know that's not an easy job and it requires a good, good deal of time on your part. And so I just want to give you a hand. Uh, thank you very much for being the chairperson. <laughs> thank you. I've got the system worked down really well. So whomever might like to do it next year, I, I've done it two years in a row. And I've got it pretty slick and, and as easy as it can be to make all the little bits and pieces run. I'm really hopeful that we'll find someone, possibly one of you fine folks here, who is going to be willing to step up, pay attention to what Rhonda has set up so that you can do it in a slick, smooth, easy, effortless way. And, uh, you know, be the person who gets a pat on the back at the end of the day. Yes. Hello, Gemma. This is great. Well, I think what we will do now, having thanked everybody and all of that good stuff, is we can turn it over to our open mic time. And so I am going to mute myself until such time as I'm reading and hand this over to Diane Yates, who has been kind enough to volunteer to do our open mic night and give us a chance to hear a little bit from each other's work. So thank you for doing this piece, Diane. And it's all up to you now. Okay, I think I'm unmuted now. Thanks, Rhonda. And I just want to echo um, everybody else's thanks for, um, for you and all your hard work for this contest. Um, am I on? My computer seems to be frozen. <laughs> uh, we can hear you, so I think you're good. That's good. Um, okay, well, uh, I want to make sure this Kimberly Stowe Green um, made it here. She was trying to get the link earlier tonight, and I was trying to message it and email it, and does anyone see her here? Okay. Um, okay, well, uh, our first, hello. Our first reader is Russell Gare. Now, Russell Gare is extremely proud to have two fans, a 12 inch three speed oscillator made by Westinghouse in 1967 and El Manuel, which features a tongue depressor by West, by a tongue depressor handle and picture of Jesus. Sorry. He is the author of The Perils of Heavy Thinking and One Idiot Short of a Village, and he recently fabricated an entire novel entitled Criminal Minds. Mimes. To learn more about Russell, visit his website at russellgayer.com. Take it away, Russell. Thank you, Diane. Tonight I'm going to read you guys a little essay called uh, Reality Magazines. <clears throat> Why is it the only magazines you'll find in a waiting room are the never popular good housekeeping, better homes and gardens, and Southern living? Shuffling through the plethora of advertisements, you might accidentally stumble across an article filled with photos of a neatly manicured home. Why aren't there magazines for those of us who live in the real world? What we need are alternatives like mediocre homes and weed beds, creative clutter, nasty gnomes and gargoyles, 
and Northern getting by. Let's examine each of these more closely and see what's inside. Mediocre homes and weed beds. This periodical is dedicated to those whose humble abode fits in the gap barely above the poverty line, yet far below the wealthy. Politicians refer to this as the middle class, but how would they know? They're all wealthy. <laughs> the homes pictured in this magazine range from modest to unexceptional. Most could use a serious makeover, but who can afford it? Because there's always plenty of month left at the end of the money. Mediocre Homes addresses the age old question. How can you tastefully decorate on a budget of zero dollars? <laughs> Features include repurposing other people's junk you pick up at the curb, garage sale giveaways, and stealing the patio furniture from the home of someone who moved out this morning. You'll discover the right time of day to search for these items and which neighborhoods offer the best selection. Every article is chock full of tips on how to blend these new acquisitions with your existing decor without looking overdone or tacky. If you're curious about how to make the green space around your house less inviting, they have the answer for that too. Don't waste your money on fancy plants and shrubs. They're a constant expense requiring fertilizer, mulch, and daily water. Before you know it, you've spent enough money to have bought the Taj Mahal. A more cost-effective and less labor-intensive solution lies in a hardy group of invasive perennials, sometimes referred to as weeds. <laughs> weeds come in a variety of shapes, sizes, and allergy initiators. They're drought resistant, and can survive massive doses of Roundup. Even someone with a brown thumb, like me, cannot kill them. Another thing, great thing about weeds is you don't have to plant them. They simply come up on their own. It doesn't matter if the soil is rich or poor, the migrant weed will make itself at home and begin to thrive. If you pull a few, it only serves to inspire and motivate the rest to produce faster. Pretty soon you'll be staring at the thick, lush greenery through watery, itchy eyes and wondering if your next sneezing attack will kill you. Every issue features a wide array of recipes for the less adventurous. The food is palatable and provides adequate nutrition. One that got five-star reviews was tuna help yourselfer. My kids thought eating tuna straight from the can was so cool, said one working mother. I serve it with salt-free crackers so it won't be so spicy. Creative clutter. This publication doesn't limit itself to the interior of the home. Garages, barns, and she sheds also offer prime real estate for displaying those aesthetically pleasing treasures you'll never use but can't stand to part with. Want to know how to add cute clutter without even trying? They've got it covered. Need advice on how to hide things from yourself? See page 54 of the current issue. Where to buy replacements for something you know you have but can't find? Read, two is never enough in the replenishment section. Before I subscribed to Creative Clutter, the only thing in our garage was a couple of cars. Pretty boring, I know, inventory specialist Sherry Bowling says with a laugh. Seeing how other people were taking advantage of all that unused area made me realize how much space we were wasting. <laughs> now the cars are outside and there's no room to work on anything in the garage. My husband loves it. <laughs> Clutter creates a relaxed and welcoming atmosphere, says managing editor Franz Goforth. Have you ever been in someone's home that was so neat and organized you felt like you couldn't breathe for fear of damaging the decor? Most people are uncomfortable with that type of environment. Add some clutter and your guests won't, guests won't have to worry about their host going into cardiac arrest if a few cookie crumbles fall to the carpet. Nasty, nasty gnomes and gargoyles. This comes out twice a year. The December issue focuses on the spring summer gardening season, statuaries and troll bridges. The July issue spotlights Halloween and Christmas ideas. Homes you'll see on these pages range from upscale to Gothic. You'll find ideas on repurposing that lawn jockey you inherited from Aunt Lucy and where to photograph your Elvis gnome to get the most likes on Facebook. 
If keeping those pesky neighborhood kids off your property is the goal, you'll love Mor Morbid Mike's column on retrofitting stone dragons with flamethrowers. He also author authored an excellent article on adding motion sensors and solar powered platform to enable your nasty gnome or menacing troll to slowly turn and keep an evil eye on anyone crossing your property line. And for those of you with a whimsical taste, you'll learn how to make the classic boy peeing in the pond even more fun by simply adding yellow food coloring to the water. Northern getting by. A group of board editors gave birth to this stepchild companion of Southern living during a week long blizzard when they only had a lone bottle of whiskey and a deck containing 48 cards. While the adage, no one retires and moves north still rings true, the fact remains that people do reside there and in all fairness, deserve a magazine of their own. Most of the articles in Northern Getting By revolve around indoor activities. You'll learn how to make your own polka costume, start a scrapbook, and play Scrabble using only words that rhyme with cheese. Much of the upper Midwest was settled by Scandinavian immigrants who were used to harsh winters and jokes that weren't funny. To further pun punish these poor souls, some imbecile invented the accordion. Thankfully, God in his infinite mercy heard their cries of anguish and sent alcohol to comfort them. In fact, one third of each issue is dedicated to drinking games. Readers are invited to submit their ideas as well. Here's an example of how a mundane chore was turned into a game just by adding alcohol. My sister-in-law and I invented a game called Miss the Spot convenience store clerk Bev Kowalski reported. It works like this. One person washes dishes and the other dries. If the person drying finds a food particle on a plate, she yells, miss the spot, and the person washing must chug a cup of beer. The players rotate after three drinks. The first time we played it, we must have washed every dish in the house at least seven times. The magazine's recipes are uniquely Northern, and a testament to their passion for consuming weird animal parts and mass quantities of fermented cabbage. You'll find exciting articles with recipes such as liverwurst, it's not just for breakfast, oxtails and cocktails, and brain power from pig brains. Those of you with a sweet and sour craving may want to test your culinary skills by making sauerkraut cream brulee, sauerkraut snow ice cream, and sauerkraut cotton candy. Now that you've had a glimpse inside the exciting world of reality magazines, I'm sure you found two or three that would take your mind off the gunshot wound of your husband's groin and what you're gonna tell the police while you're sitting in the surgery room waiting for six hours. Reality magazine subscriptions make great gifts too. If you wanna be an anonymous giver, simply check the bless her heart box and the order form. Whether you want to surprise your boss or just let that special cousin know how much you think of her, there's no greater gift than a 12 month subscription selected especially for them. The end. Thank you. I love it. Am I? Good stuff, Russell. Yeah, we hear you, Diane. Yeah, it was great, Russell. We had the pleasure of reading that in critique, but it, it was fun to hear you read it out loud. I was laughing myself silly over here. Me too, me too. Um, okay, first of all, before I announce the next reader, um, I want to let Kimberly Green know that I see you and I am glad you made it on here. Yes. I will be calling on you um, in just a few minutes. But our next reader is Joni Roberts. Joni Roberts is a teacher, author, and poet exploring the worlds of poetry, nature, and photography. Joni loves to capture ordinary moments and reflect on our natural world in its intersection with daily life. Roberts co-founded the Shadow Leaves Company, started the blog Shadow Leaves on Lake Anne, and a local writers group, Village on the Lake, Writers and Poets. Currently, Joni is writing a three book series of poetry, I Walk These Ozark Hills. And Joni is on if 
she is on here. It, does, do you see her, Rhonda? I have to, I can't see the thing very well, Diane, so I can look and try to let you know <laughs> in a minute. My, I am, um, I see little pictures and I don't get everybody. I see somebody with a phone number. I don't know who it is. Um, or a bunch of numbers. Can you unmute the person with the phone number? Yeah, there we go. I've asked them to unmute. Um, okay, they're still muted, right? I don't know, I've asked them to unmute. Okay. So I don't know who that is. Okay, well, um, Joni, if you are if you are here or trying to sign on or can hear us and we just can't see you, um, just communicate to somebody else who's here and we'll make sure that we get back to you. Yeah, you can drop a note in the chat if you're here and then we'll see that too. Okay. Yeah, some of you guys are much more tech savvy about all that than I am. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, well, unfortunately, I'm next on the list. So um, now I have to follow Russell. Okay. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> I always say that I do not have a sense of humor. If I ever write anything humorous, I know that it was inspired by a higher being. Uh, <laughs> so, okay, this is my bio, and I'm going to try to make me sound more impressive than I actually am. I am a writer of inspirational romantic fiction and nonfiction. My fate series published by Forget Me Not Romances, an imprint of winged publications, includes Melissa's Fate and Impossible Fate. I'm currently working on the third book. WB, WMB publishers published my two biography memoirs, uh, Pathways of the Heart and All That Matters. I'm honored to say I have served two terms as president of Ozarks Writers League and am also a member of American Christian Fiction Writers. You can find out more about me at dianeyates.com. And tonight I'm gonna to read from, um, from my work in progress, Love's Fate, chapter one. Deborah folded the sheet of paper tucked in her tote and tucked it in her tote. The Israeli sun blazed high above as she walked down the street in Tiberias toward the market. She felt liberated surprised that her mother allowed her to go alone. Ever since her sister, Aaliyah, left the family five years ago, her parents had restricted Deborah's freedom, sending her to the same school they sent Aaliyah and monitoring all of her movements. Before descending the hill, 17-year-old Deborah passed by a black car with tinted windows parked on the side of the road. She stopped and stared at the Tiberian Sea, watching the boat sailing below. In the distance, the crew of one cast a net into the water and passengers peered over the ship's side, no doubt reliving the picture she had seen of Yeshua and his followers casting their net and drawing in a haul of fish. It was also confusing what these Christians believed. Were they fishing for fish or men or what? Crazy. Yet her sister Aaliyah, whom she had admired and respected, had joined them despite their craziness. A pain struck deep within her soul. Deborah shook her head and resumed walking. When she reached the corner, an engine started behind her. She turned to see the black car pull into the street, but it didn't accelerate normally. Instead, it crept along, making the hair on her arm stand up. Her feet turned to lead and chills shoot up her spine. Deborah continued, but her heart beat faster. She increased her pace, turning back to check on the vehicle. It steadily moved behind her as if it were following who, her? She struggled to breathe as her asthma choked and constricted her airway. Without missing a step, she fumbled in her bag for her inhaler while walking briskly. Her fingers grasped it and desperately inhaled a puff while crossing the street. 
A man leaned against the doorframe of the store on the opposite corner and stared at her. Sweat beaded on her hands and forehead. She glanced back again to confirm the black sedan still inching its way along her same path. How she wished her parents had allowed her a cell phone, but Deborah had been denied a lot of things because of her sister's actions. The market was still four blocks away and she decided to make a run for it. On impulse, she darted into the alley, trying to shake her pursuers. The engine's car revved and drew closer. Tires squealed, a car door opened and shut. Shoes rapidly smacked the pavement behind her. At that, she ran hard and didn't dare look back. Deborah searched for an open door, any haven of safety, but found none. A female voice yelled behind her, Deborah, wait. Still, she wouldn't slow down, knowing that abductors often use other women to capture their prey. A strong hand clasped her arm and yanked her around. She was about to become one of the abducted, but not without a fight. She swung and kicked, but the chaser thwarted her defensive attempts. The woman pinned her against the alley and wall of one of the shops. Deborah's heart pounded. She struggled for breath as she looked into the eyes of her pursuer. It's okay, her abductor lied. I didn't mean to frighten you. When the woman reached into her pocket, Deborah considered screaming. She could be retrieving a gun, a taser, handcuffs, a handkerchief with chloroform. But the stranger pulled out a pouch with a drawstring. My name is Anna, she continued. I'm delivering this to you from Aaliyah. She said to tell you she's written you letters and tried to call. Anna handed her the pouch. Deborah stared at the bag in her shaking hand, trying to grasp what had just happened. As Anna started to walk away, Deborah yelled, wait, have you seen her? Is she here? Anna spun around. Oh my goodness, I almost forgot. I'm supposed to tell you she'll see you soon. Deborah's mouth dropped as the woman got back in the passenger side of the mysterious car. She raised her brows and glanced at the velvet pouch in her hand. What could be inside? Slowly, she stretched the drawstring and took out a small globe with snow that glistened as it drifted in the water. The structure inside was not unfamiliar to her. The baby, lying in a manger, was surrounded by its mother, father, and shepherds. It stirred feelings of wonderment, but also of disdain, for it represented the cult that took Aaliyah from her, indeed from the family. As Deborah turned it upside down, it played a musical note. She wound it up and it played a song that sounded vaguely familiar. The bottom of the globe read, Oh Holy Night. She pulled a note out of the pouch and opened it. I think of you often, dear sister, and miss you more than you can imagine. With all my heart, I wish you the joy that I have found. This snow globe depicts the greatest love ever extended. Keep it. Remember me when you look at it and know that I love you. Deborah ran to the end of the alley and searched the street for the strange car. She had more questions and was disappointed she hadn't thought of them before. After class and before his work shift, Amir read God's word alone in his apartment. <clears throat> Ever since his faith and belief in Jesus, he couldn't seem to read enough. He spent hours talking with God. He didn't have many friends in Tiberias, but the Dahans had taken him under their wings, gave him a job at their market, and introduced him to others at their church. When he had told his family about his newfound faith, it was the hardest thing he had ever done, and it changed his life completely. His mother had fainted. His father denounced him in Arabic. How could you bring this, fam bring this shame on your family? With fury in his face, he approached until only three inches separated them. How could you turn your back on Allah? Amir feared his father might actually strike him or worse, knowing that such a crime in Islam might even mean death. Instead, his elder physically threw him out of the house and slammed the door. His faith cost him his family, his community, and all he had ever known. Still, he would pick up his cross and follow his savior. He had much to learn. The loneliness of his ostracization had been the hardest. He prayed for wisdom and increased faith. He prayed for his family's faith. And last but not least, he asked God to send him the right woman to love. 
As he left to go to work, he put his earbuds in and listened to songs that caused him to sway, smile, and lift his hands. But one of the songs spoke of soulmates and love, dream come true. Amir sang along with the words as people stared at him. When he arrived at the market, Mrs. Dahan asked him to put out the new produce, a fresh batch of green peppers. As he worked, he hummed and sang, and when love finally comes my way, how will I know? Where are you, my dream come true? Mr. Dahan shook his head. He really has it bad, he said to his wife, and she nodded. After Deborah arrived at the market, she looked at the first thing on her list, pomegranates, but she couldn't stop thinking about the way her sister had reached out to her after all this time. She had touched the globe deep inside her tote. With her mind adrift in thought, one of the pre precious fruits slipped through her fingers and fell to the ground. She stooped to pick it up, but heard someone yelling in Arabic. Understanding only a couple of words, she had no idea what was being said except the word for merchandise. While her hand reached for the fallen pomegranate, sandaled masculine feet appeared around the edge of the bin, clean toes and well-groomed. She grasped the fruit and straightened, coming face to face with her accuser. He was about two inches taller, younger than she expected, maybe about her age with thick black hair and piercing brown eyes. Her breath halted. His lips curved into a smile, exposing cute dimples above his slight beard. Careful with the merchandise, he explained in English. Deborah took two steps backward, her shyness surfacing like an unwanted zit. She wasn't around young men as a rule, and the smile on this one was way too familiar. Besides, he had spoken in Arabic, not Hebrew. That's when she noticed his apron with the name of the market on it. She glanced down toward the floor. I'm sorry, I'll purchase this one, she said, holding the pomegranate. No, it's okay. I was not serious. He handed her a basket. Here, you can put your items in here. She took the basket and started to turn away. That's five pages, so I'll stop there. Surface like a zit. I love that about the zit. That was great. I love that reading, Miss Diane. Thank you. Me too. <laughs> Very good. Thank good job. You. Um, and next on the list, I have Kimberly uh, Stowe Green, and um, and is. I don't know, Kimberly, is she a new member? Are you a new member? Are you visiting with us? Kimberly, are you there? I see her speaking, but she, uh, it does not show that she's muted, but she, uh, we're not getting anything. Kimberly, we, we don't hear you. You can unmute yourself. Uh, my my unmute was at the top right hand of my um, box. Yeah, it's usually in the bottom on the left, but on an iPad, it's in the upper right. So I don't know what you have. It's a microphone. There'll be a slash through it or there won't when, you're, when we can hear you. Well, um, hmm. You can always try going out and coming back in again. Um, I don't know if you did a speaker check before a microphone check or if you've done a Zoom before. We're a very laid back group. So, yeah. so everybody did, I mean, we've got the awards over with and you know, oh, it's not like we didn't have a buttload of tech issues earlier, but you know, so <laughs> it's not a big deal. Right it happens, but right. you can't if you if you have trouble, you can always go out and come back because every once in a while zoom just like I don't know it like gets brain fuzz or something like that. So yeah, if all else fails, you can try that. We want you back. We want to hear and it, don't worry about it. You know, stuff happens. It's no big deal. Well, she's in the process now. She was with us now. She's out. OK, that's fine. She signaled that she would be coming back. OK, I'm glad we didn't run her off. Um, okay, well, uh, should I 
we can go on and come back to her perhaps, or if she comes back in a second when we can just go ahead and let her let her go. But I keep thinking maybe she'll show up and and then we can okay. Yeah, if she comes, if she right back, if she comes right back, we're good. Okay. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and move on and um and then hopefully she'll be back and then we'll get started with her and hopefully Joni uh, will, will join us as well. Um, okay, so our next reader is Rhonda Del Bacchio. Rhonda, is that the right way to say your last name? Uh, close enough, Del Bacchio, but that's okay. Okay, because I'd heard different. I know, it's easy to botch it up, but, but Del Bacchio, like, you know, botch it up like okay. that. Okay. Well, Rhonda, it, Rhonda Del Baccio is the Amazon best-selling and award-winning author of numerous works of fiction, nonfiction, poetry, and memoir, including several books. She has also won awards for her art, photography, cooking, and translation of a medieval Spanish cookbook. She is also a gifted psychic medium offering spiritual guidance and an avid paper crafter. She is the current vice president of Ozar Writers League and secretary of her local Lions Club. Although she is mostly blind, she doesn't let that stop her doing what she wants to do. Read stories on her blog, magicalstoriesbyrhonda.wordpress.com. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be able to read for you. And this is actually an unpublished short story that I entered for a different contest, which was the Writer's Weekly 24-hour short story contest where you have a day to use their prompt and write a story of a maximum length that they give you. So this story is called Real Magic. And within a week, I'll find out if I did anything with it, but who knows? So here it is, Real Magic. With the Harvest Festival starting soon, excitement ran high. My seasonally decorated shop windows reflected locals and tourists alike as they bustled here and there. People snapped photos galore and posted them everywhere. Even though I took immense pride in my elaborate displays, it always surprised me that people came to visit real magic for the window dressings as much as for the handmade gifts inside. My last bit of ambiance was to place the cornucopia in the flower box in front of the shop and fill it with autumnal treats. I felt eyes on me as I arranged the fruit and nuts. Hi, Jamie, I said without turning. Wow, Allie, how'd you know it was me? I pointed to the sign, real magic. He didn't need to know. I could see the top of his head reflected in the window. Magic came in so many forms. He pointed. I love the leaves around the edge and that huge pumpkin. Is it real? Nah, I made it out of foam. Can I see, he asked, eyes wide. I looked around. Where's your family? Jamie studied his laces. Dad's across the street getting Jasmine new shoes. Does he know where you are? No, but if I'm quick, uh, let's get out of the cold. As if in answer, the wind blew crackly leaves and a stray candy wrapper at us. I will text your dad so he doesn't worry. Inside, the bell jangled its welcome. How'd you make the pumpkin look so real, Jamie asked. I smiled. And don't tell me it's real magic. I lifted him so he could touch it. It's made with real magic and real paint. Aha, paint, but I thought magicians weren't supposed to reveal their secrets. I set him down. When did I ever claim to be a magician? He cocked his head and ran a finger across his chin. Hmm, well, I guess you never did. 
but this is the place where magic comes to life. He pointed at the banner over the door. So shouldn't there be a magician? <laughs> That's one way of looking at it. I took him to the register. Jamie, stay right here beside me while I take care of these customers, okay? Okay, but I need help finding something too. It'll just take a few minutes. I took a clementine out of my pocket. Here, I had an extra orange. It's not made of foam, is it? No, silly, it's real. After taking care of customers, I took Jamie in front of the counter. Now, what are you looking for today, Jamie? I need a magic trick. His eyes scanned the shelves, but I don't see any. He stuffed his hands in his pockets and studied the carpet. I lifted his chin with my finger. What kind of magic do you need? I need to make dad smile. My heart hurt for him. Dad works so hard. Jamie teared up. He's always working or taking care of us. Tears welled in my eyes too. He's a good dad. Jamie nodded. He needs to smile more. I took his hand. I think I have the perfect magic for him. I led Jamie to a rack of handmade cards. He pointed at one with Lego blocks on it. You build me up, that's perfect. Fill it out before he comes for you. I set a bucket of markers out for him. As I rang up a customer, Jorge and Jasmine came dashing in, the bell jangled. Calmate, Jorge, I told him. Your son is fine. Oh, Alisand, thank you. Was he any trouble? I loved the sound of my name in his accent, Alisand. None at all. Hi, me ran, Jamie ran up, waving the card. Here, Daddy, I made this for you. He had colored the Lego blocks and written his message inside. Jorge smiled. Gracias, mijo. I love you both so much. He hugged his kids. Jorge looked 10 years younger with the bright smile. Jamie, do you know what you did today? I asked. Oh no, I forgot to pay, the boy said, handing me money. Is this enough? I shook my head. No, no, keep your dollar. You did something great today. I did? I nodded. You performed real magic. And that's it. Well done, Rhonda. Thank you. Okay, they muted me. That was great, Rhonda. Thank you. Um, yeah, I could just see everything as it was happening. Um, okay, so we have two other readers tonight. We have Joni and Kimberly. And I, I keep going through everybody. I don't see either one of them. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, there's a search. Let me just try. No, I don't see Kimberly. I guess she didn't make it back. And let me just check my phone and make sure she didn't message me. She did not. Bless her heart. Oh, well, that is sad. I wanted to hear both of those people read their stuff. So does, does anyone know, is, is she a new member or is she visiting for tonight? I mean, I'm not familiar with her. I do not know. She might have been somebody who found out because of some posting on social or whatever, but we'd certainly love to hear from her if she's around. I mean, this is being live streamed on various places in Facebook. So if you're out there in the world and hear us, please come back. <laughs> we don't want to run you off. We still want to hear from you. <laughs> I, I would like to read you her bio. Yeah, please do. Um, cause you know, hopefully she'll, she'll be back at some point. Um, if not at this conference, maybe at the next, um, Kimberly is a 21 year veteran of the U S air force and a widow of a combat veteran who died from service connected injuries. 
She lives in Greenwood, Arkansas, and has two grown sons. Green is a published poet and writes for Veterans Voices, a national magazine. She has had over 38 poems published in various national magazines. And I wish we could have heard from her tonight. I do too, and I'd love to thank her for her service. Yes, yes. Um, and then uh, Joni, of course, um, is, uh, it is all, would have also been reading poetry. So, um, so we're gonna miss out on our poets, I guess. And, and yeah. that's, that's all I have for open mic. Okay. Well, thank you so much for hosting for us and taking care of that. Wish we could have heard from those other people, certainly. But I enjoyed hearing from you and Russell, for sure. I, I enjoy open mic. Um, I, 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 it's a, it's, um, it's good experience. It also, um, it's good to get feedback on, on what you write. Uh, I know what I read tonight is rough. I'm still, I haven't even edited anything. So, um, so, you know, I, I appreciate feedback for sure. And, and I, I, I think that even I still get nervous before I read. But um, but OWL is just such a great group to read, especially during open mic, because we're just very laid back, relaxed, and all friends. And we don't shoot anybody if they uh, stumble over a word or, you know, have something a little bit wonky. We, we don't mind. It happens <laughs> we're all writers here, so we understand. <laughs> right. Well, I'd like to say this about open mic and, and just uh reading and in, in, out loud in general you know i think one of the things that inspired me as a child was in elementary school after lunch the teacher would always read to us and we would kind of like lay our heads on the desk and seemed like it was a lot of little house in the prairie and that sort of thing but it really didn't matter every day she'd read two or three chapters and she'd stop at the end there was kind of a cliffhanger you know it's like, oh my God, I can't wait till tomorrow. And, and I think that really kind of inspired my love uh, for reading and for writing as well, because uh, just having a teacher just read out loud to the students like that uh, was a big deal. And, and I, I enjoyed listening to those stories. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's a great thing about the open mic. And I wish, you know, more people felt uh, comfortable in reading their stories because there's some great stuff out there uh, mm -hmm. but we need to hear your voice mm -hmm. yeah and I'll tell you it's not uncommon if you get nervous I used to much now I mean like I've been a public speaker since I was knee-high to a grasshopper but uh, reading from my work old oh, man it used to just really get me unnerved now it doesn't bother me so much but it's just like many other things you know, maybe the first uh, five or 10 or a hundred times or whatever, it's pretty nerve wracking. And then at some point you relax and you realize, well, there is not a firing range. Nobody is pointing a gun at me. No one's going to lob off my head or whatever. No one's going to laugh at me in the wrong sense of the word, you know, and be critical in that way. So that it's really safe and it's really okay. So I hope that everybody, when you have a chance for an open mic or if you have like a coffee shop or coffee house near you that has something like um, a bardic circle, an open mic, anything like that, that should take advantage and give it a try. Absolutely. I, yeah, I agree. I would just like to say that I regret I couldn't participate in open mic this time, but I can't talk that long without a coughing fit or three. So I'm sorry, but I open mic you. is one of my favorite things about OWL. So next year, well, I'm all over if, it. If you got five pages, I bet there's somebody in this group that could read them for you. I was going to say, just shoot your pages to somebody and they could read for you. That would be okay. You know, now we're just kind of in the casual portion and we can visit for as long as people feel like visiting. So Marguerite, yeah, if you, uh, if you want to send your pages to somebody, that'd be fine. Well, let me see if I can find something real quick. Oh, I want to hear your book. You have 
what's the first story in your book? Is it on the look inside on Amazon? Um, I'm really not sure if it's on the look inside or not, but uh, <laughs> it'll be harder to email that unless you go to your um, original uh, manuscript. Tomer, do you have something you could read? All right, I'll read. You do that. I'm going to run my dog. Go for it. I was going to read for Marguerite, but I'll read a little of mine. So here's my new book. It's a uh, Hard Start Mars Intrigue. I bought that today, Summer. Oh, you did? Awesome. I don't buy yours because I really have to have it. <laughs> and yours is a great price. That's fantastic. Yeah. All right, somebody else came in on the phone. Is this the lady we were missing? Uh, Kimberly, is that you? Are mm -hmm. you? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes. And you are? I'm having, <laughs> but you can't see me probably. We can't see you, but are you Kimberly? Have... Yes, I'm Kimberly. I'm having issues with this Zoom. Well, we've got you now. So, Summer, can I put you on hold? And let's hear from Kimberly. Absolutely. Okay. Love to see you, Kimberly, but but we would mostly <laughs> love to hear you. So, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for having me. I've already um, I've already read your bio. So, okay. um, several of us, you know, said that we uh, want to be sure and thank for your service and um thank you and your husband's sacrifice thank you ma'am thank you um i have two poems i did select to read tonight they've both been published um do you want me to go ahead and start yes that'd be great okay the first one is named list don't place me on a list don't ignore me and turn your back. I serve my country proud in the sands of Iraq. If I'm wheelchair bound, don't look the other way. I'm a person just like you whom from war has lost my legs. If I have no arms, acknowledge me, I am here. Don't turn the other way, just to hide your tears. If I've lost my sight, use your voice, I can hear. Acknowledge my presence, relinquish your fear. I have injuries one cannot see. I don't like to talk about what I've seen. So don't ask me things I can't say. It will only make me dream. For I'm a combat veteran. My injuries were sustained in war. I'll never be the same as I was before. Kimberly, wow. awesome. Thank Very powerful. You. Bravo. Thank you. Bravo. Did, did you have Thank another one too? I have another one, and this one uh, is called Letters from a Slow Read, and it's also been published. She hobbled outside just as the snow began. She thought no one saw what she held in her hand. A bundle of letters tied with a string, making her way to an old tree that held a rickety swing. No one would have guessed, or would they really care, that once she was young, no gray in her light brown hair. This woman of 90, so light on her feet, no person around would know she was really 93. What could these letters have possibly said? Were they letters of joy? Were they good or were they sad? And I watched behind my curtain I hid. I watched this old woman burn her letters that she did. All the while I watched, no sounds I made. As she reread each letter and burnt them all, then she saved. I never saw her again. But I heard someone say that the woman was a widow. The great war made her that way. And as the years have gone by, I too was made a widow. In the blink of an eye, my war letters sit in a bundle by my side. And though I didn't understand back when I was just a kid, I now know why the woman did what she did. This bundle of memories of our love, sacrifices, and war holds a place for no one else, no one eyes but yours. And just like her, one day when I'm very old, I'll take my letters outside. I shall reread them in the cold. And when I'm done, I shall light a flame and burn our letters of love for our eyes only. This shall remain. 
Oh, that was that was great. That was great. Thank you. Very nice. Thank Very you, beautiful. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you, you for sharing. So are those you. Are, are those poems you, are they published in the Veterans Voices magazine? Yes. Yes, ma'am. These two were published. Um, I believe uh, it's a quarterly magazine, so it was last uh, fall and the summer that these were published. Okay. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for your service as well. It was great Thank to you hear so you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And hopefully maybe um, I am going to sign up because I'm not signed up. Um, so maybe the next time if you do open mic, I can, you'll be able to see me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and we're hoping, are you, are you coming to the conference tomorrow? Or I mean, are you going to attend the conference virtually? Um, I hope to do that. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Hopefully we'll get, get all the kinks worked out. Um, and you can, yes, and then we were talking earlier about the fact that in the uh, spring where, um, you know, we're, we're very hopeful that we can actually meet in person and it would be yeah. great to get it would to be awesome and, uh, and, and get to know you a little bit better. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Good, good night. Uh, good night. Good night, Kimberly. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Well, Rhonda, I guess I'll turn this back to you. Well, thank you so much. And we can just all visit now and, and you know play and have fun for a little while. Thank you again for hosting that, Diane. Appreciate you. And it's just so fun to visit and to hear from people. And I mean, I'm grateful for technology. So at least we can see each other somewhat. It's better than not at all. <laughs> okay. Um, Summer, sorry. Let's get oh, Summer's going to read, right? I'm sorry. I took well, the dog I out of my brain. Up, yeah, please go ahead, Summer. Marguerite's, I pulled up Marguerite's Look Inside on Amazon. And okay. I've got the whole thing of Clean Heist just email that to you as well oh okay well i can read it right here <laughs> would you like me to do that yes please, please. yes 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 uh, i love that story <clears throat> all right monica pushed her buggy down the aisle of the big box store and searched for canned goods on the sparsely stocked shelves the pandemic okay. had gone to people's heads and there was hardly any food left at the store she sighed as she reached for the last can of green beans. Still, still there because it was hidden behind the hominy. She studied her nearly empty buggy. Unable to find toilet paper, paper towels, or hand sanitizer, she'd be forced to make another stop. She smiled at the generic laundry soap she'd scored. A few weeks ago, she wouldn't have even noticed it. Things had changed, and she was grateful to have snagged the bottle from the almost empty aisle. After paying for her meager purchases, she drove to the next door. She was able to open the door of her minivan when a news story on the radio caught her attention. Someone had been breaking into tractor trailers and stealing supplies. Another truck had been hit the night before. The authorities were looking for a blonde, white male, in his 30s, driving a blue Chevy minivan. No license plate number was available. Hair standing up on the back of her neck, she started her vehicle and drove home. She frowned at an unfamiliar old Honda parked in the street in front of her house. She looked around, but didn't see anyone. Careful to be as quiet as possible, she took her groceries inside. Voices carried through the floor vents from downstairs, drawing her attention. I can't let you have it for less than 50, dude. This is a choice product right here. He laughed before continuing. I guarantee you won't find this high quality product anywhere else right now. Suspicion darkening her thoughts, Monica crept down the stairs to the game room and peered through the corner, around the corner. Her boyfriend, Greg, stood with a man in rumpled sweatpants and an air of desperation in front of a huge stack of boxes. She squinted, 
trying to read the markings from her vantage point. She felt dizzy as the letters became clear, the largest cache of Purell hand sanitizer she'd ever seen was taking up nearly half of her basement game room. Shaking her head to clear it, she marched into the room. Greg, who's your friend? She leveled her best glare at the man she loved. Monica, he looked around focusing on anything but her face. I didn't know you were home. Obviously. She crossed her arms and narrowed her eyes further. Their nervous guest cleared his throat. Listen, I don't need any trouble. I have five kids. I can't find this stuff anywhere. I need it, man. Have you ever tried to keep a toddler's hands clean? Greg straightened his shoulders. $50 a case. Take it or leave it. Monica could say a word. Before Monica could say a word, the man thrust a wad of cash into her boyfriend's hand and dashed out the basement door to the backyard, clutching a case of Purell. Greg slid the money into his pocket and turned to her. I'm doing business here. You're always bugging me to get a job and help with bills. Well, this is my part-time job. Where did you get all this hand sanitizer and why? He avoided her gaze. It's a business opportunity, that's all. Where did you get the money to pay for it? She studied him. You did pay for it, right? When he didn't respond, she pressed. Please tell me you didn't steal a bunch of Purell. He laughed long and loud, his eyes wide with a crazed gleam. It was a clean heist. I saw a Target truck in the lot with nobody in it. The trailer lock wasn't very good. It opened easy. I had to hurry, so I only swiped the good stuff. It didn't take any time at all to load it in the van. I was gone before anybody even knew I was there. You did what? She clenched her fist to keep from throttling him. Babe, Target's insured. They won't be out anything. I saw an opportunity to make some money and took it. You should be proud. She shook her head, trembling in fury. You stole something that people desperately need from a truck heading to a store where people buy supplies. You think I should be proud? You used my minivan? My house? Oh no, this stops now. She fished her cell phone from her back pocket and dialed the police. Greg shoved her to the floor and ran outside as the dispatcher answered. I found the guy stealing stuff from the big, from big trucks. I have a whole bunch of the stolen property in my house. You should send someone over before he comes back. Choking back a sob, she told them where she lived and to have the officer come to the basement door. Minutes later, a firm knock sounded and Monica opened the door to two police officers. Good afternoon, I'm Officer Black and this is Officer Sutton. I understand you have something you'd like to show us. Wiping a tear from her face, she pointed to the Purell. My boyfriend just told me he stole this stuff from a Target truck last night. It's probably not his first time either. He used my van to do it, too. Officer Black took her statement while his partner searched the house. His radio crackled and they heard Officer Sutton announce he, he located the suspect hiding in a closet and taking him into custody. It looks like he snuck back into the house and was waiting for us to leave. Good thing we got here when we did. Officer Black flipped his notebook closed and slid it into his shirt pocket with his pen. My partner has Greg secured in the car. He'll stay there with him. We'll send someone to collect the Purell soon. It's evidence. She nodded, feeling hollow inside. Do you plan to continue to allow him to reside here? No, she whispered. I can't trust him. You should change your locks as soon as possible. He patted her shoulder. Calling us took courage. It was the right thing to do. Try to take comfort in that. Nodding, she walked him to the door and locked it behind him. Staring at the boxes of stolen goods, she asked the universe, why in the world didn't he steal toilet paper instead? Risking jail time for that makes much more sense. <laughs> Great job, Marguerite. Hey, Marguerite.
Thank you. Yeah. And thanks for reading that, Summer. Hey, you're Great welcome. Great closing line there. I love love the closing. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Mm hmm Very cute. And it's great to see you, Marguerite. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. It's good to be here and upright. <laughs> yes, we're glad yes. to have you. We're glad to have you upright. Upright is good. <laughs> Vertical is better. <laughs> um, I've got an, I was fiddling with my phone because I got a message from Joni. She wasn't able to make it. You know, of course they tell me this and I'm the one running the thing. So, you know, until I just happen to look, I have no idea when people do that to me, I'm like, oh, okay. I could have told you, but I didn't know it before we started, Diane. So sorry about that, that she wasn't able to make it. And she sent along her apologies. Okay. But I don't think we ran her off. So that's good. <laughs> Wouldn't want to run her off. <laughs> well, um, okay. So while we're just hanging out, I have something to say to um, Rhonda. Um, what I really liked about your, um, what you read, uh, I liked the language. Um, it, and you did such a good job with it. Um, huh. I know that what I'm working on, uh, the setting is Israel and there will be Hebrew in it. And there is absolutely no way I will be able to pronounce any of that. I uh, tried to take an online Hebrew class and um, that didn't work. <laughs> you know, you could probably ask Rochelle for pointers if you're gonna be reading aloud somewhere, she could probably help you on those particular words. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's, there's something that they do from the back of their throat that I can't do. Well, yeah, I know the whole thing, but, but you can maybe come close. She could probably help you a little bit. Spanish is easier. I took Spanish four years in high school, I've been to traveling and stuff so that was easy I, I think Hebrew would be much harder <laughs> and Margaret your story was um yeah that was priceless it made me think about going to I went to the, the drug store to pick up uh a, probably a prescription and this lady came out of the this is during this time and this lady came out with this cart and she had it just piled with toilet paper and because they had i don't know their angel or whatever on sale and uh, <laughs> i went in and picked up one package but she had her whole cart <laughs> oh, i got a tip for everybody on toilet paper if this ever happens again okay the, the um janitorial supply companies and there's a nice one up in joplin they never ran out of toilet paper you can buy a hundred rolls for 50 bucks. And, and so don't huh. ever go without, <laughs> no need for that. I'm not positive about the price on this, but uh, you can check Amazon or your local uh, hardware store and you can get a little uh, T fitting that goes onto your toilet uh, water line and have a little bidet for about 10 or 15 bucks. Uh, it's not going to be the mo warmest, most comfortable thing in the world, but it will work very nicely to get the job done. So, <laughs> so speaking of getting jobs done, uh, I wanted to let everybody know there the latest issue of the newsletter is live. It is on the, the uh, OWL website right now. So if anybody is interested in that, please let everybody else know. Wonderful. Yes. I can't wait to see that. Yeah, I did send the newsletter link out and I know at the moment I sent it, it wasn't live, but I knew it would get there. So I just said, check, it'll be there soon. <laughs> That's the best I could say, you know, but that'll be there. And we'll have the winners list will be on the website over the weekend. Checks are in the mail for the winners. So that'll come soon. And we have just a little bit more time to purchase raffle tickets so that Russell and I uh, good thing we're, we're good buddies because we have to talk a lot during the contest stuff and now the raffle and everything. So we want to wrap up the ticket sales and be ready to do the draw for tomorrow. And there are some awesome prizes and Marguerite just worked her heart out getting really fabulous prizes for us. So that it will be exciting tomorrow to do that drawing. And I will get the prizes mailed out 
sometime next week, just as soon as I can get to the post office. Well, you did it. A great job, Marguerite. I think we should yes. all give you a hand. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Bravo, for sure. You did a fabulous job. I feel like a failure because Rhonda had to take over for me. Gosh. No, no, you were sick, sweetie. I just offered to pinch it. Like I said, I wasn't trying to rip out all your hard work from under you. I just wanted to support you and let you feel better. So this is Marguerite's game here. I, I'm just coming in at the end just to, uh, you know, the, the ball was flying in the air. Someone had to catch it. So that's it. <laughs> Six yep. days in the ICU kicked my butt. And messed yeah, up of course it did. So. Yeah, yep. I get you it. Did, you did a great job, Marguerite. Don't ever doubt mm -hmm. And that, that is all your hard work. I had just came in at the end. No big deal. Has uh, everyone got the link to the conference tomorrow? Anyone missing it? Isn't it the same one? Yeah, it, no, yep. it's, but it's listed for tomorrow. I, I sent the email that has, here's Friday, here's Saturday, here's the agenda. It had the newsletter, it has the raffle prizes. It came out at 6 p.m. I, I had to call it back and add the newsletter like right before it went out. I was running up the hill to make sure I could get it because I already had the thing ready to come out and then Kimberly said the newsletter was there so but I got it done anyway so it's all it's all in there you can refer back to that same email and if anybody who is this is for the conference is for members um, and it's not a free open event so those of you who are paid members which it's all of you here but in case someone's hearing this on Facebook who hasn't actually joined yet uh, is the reason you might not have seen you know, where's the link on Facebook because it's not on Facebook it's it's a uh, members only and those of you who are members have that in your email and if anybody joins overnight well by golly we'll be sure they get it <laughs> the the according to my email here the link for tonight and the link for tomorrow are the same oh they are okay good I wasn't sure what zoom had done but I, I did you know copy and paste the ones for each day okay and the password is all the same as for both of them, so. Okay. Well, I'm going to say good night, y'all. Uh, I've okay. enjoyed it. Thanks for putting up with me, and I'll see you tomorrow. It was fun hearing your Russell? story, Russell. Yep, good to see you, buddy. We'll Russell, see you tomorrow. Russell, I just laughed when I got your bio, and then when I read it, I just botched it up. I was so <laughs> Anyway. It was hilarious. Well, thank you. Glad you enjoyed it. I do like your bio about having the two fans. That's really fun. <laughs> I remember reading that last year when I pinch it for Diane. <laughs> it was so cute. See you guys tomorrow. Bye, Bye Russell. Bye. Bye. Bye now. Yep. And I think I'm going to cut out also. It's dinner time. Yeah, I know. I'm pretty, I had to have a snack earlier. I wasn't going to make it otherwise. <laughs> Yeah. Have a good night, Duke. Night, night. Bye. Good to see Bye. you all. We'll see you tomorrow. Where will those, uh, will the drawing be done in the morning or in the afternoon? Uh, I'm not really sure. I didn't actually see a, an agenda spot for it. I'm assuming in the afternoon, we could just in case, but we shall see. Okay, because I've got to uh, do a pitch for Springfield in the morning and I won't be able to join until the afternoon. And I was just mm -hmm. wondering when you was gonna have the drawing. Yeah, I think we're gonna do it in the afternoon. I just, I forgot to ask that of, uh, of Duke earlier. So I'm not quite sure. They don't have to be present to win, do they? No, no, it doesn't matter. And we'll make sure there's a list that goes out of who won what and everything. I won't be able to join until the afternoon. I, we're going to a memorial service tomorrow, and I probably should write a story about this guy because they're going to shoot his ashes out of a cannon. Oh, wow. Um, oh, wow. He owns a gun range, and that was one of his last wishes. He's, he was 89. He passed away last uh, Tuesday, uh, and he's, one of his last wishes was to have his ashes shot out of a cannon at the gun range. So That'll I'm going to go witness see. that and see what what it's all about okay. <laughs> it will it'll be interesting to see i think his daughter said they're going to have to do it in three volleys so i don't oh, know wow. I'll, I'll let you know <laughs> you know there's a it's lot of ash that comes with the human so i can kind of understand yeah. that um, i i know 
Yeah, it really is. But anyway, it's going to be interesting. So I'll see you guys tomorrow afternoon. I, I will see the, the drawing this will be in the afternoon. This has been great. This has been great. Thank you so much. Good night. Oh, it will be in the afternoon. Okay. That's kind of what Thank I thought, you, but I wasn't Veronica. Talking. Good night. Good night. I'll probably be late tomorrow. I'm having a breathing treatment at 9.30. Good. Glad you're having a breathing treatment. I, you know, the hospital didn't give me any breathing treatments at all. And I remember I had pneumonia as a kid several times. And I remember my doctor would give me a silver breathing treatment every time I had it. So yeah. I racked my brain. And I remembered that a very dear friend of mine who owns an herb shop mentioned she had treatments. So I called her. And I went and had a, my first one today and I feel so much better. You just wouldn't even believe it. So I'm having another one in the morning. Um, so I might be a few minutes late. But it's I, for can't, a good pause. I cannot believe they didn't do it in the hospital. I can't either. I asked the doctor and she said that the antibiotics she gave me should be sufficient. Oh my well, goodness. I've been, out, I've been out of the hospital for a month and it's not sufficient. So... No. I went with my herb lady. Yeah, I have a nebulizer and I will travel. <laughs> I have a nebulizer. I've got the albuterol and the, I've got mm -hmm. the, uh, there's a steroid too, if you're not allergic to it. Mm -hmm. So never go without Marguerite, just call me. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I've had, I've been in the hospital with pneumonia before. And I had round the clock uh, treatment, so I can't imagine. It was an odd experience. Hmm. Well, we're glad you're better. And yes, we, just, we are. Just get 100%. I'm working on it. <laughs> yeah, we want you back up at, uh, at full strength for sure. Thank you. <clears throat> When I had pneumonia, I coughed my head off and I got all this sinus pressure built up on my right side and I felt like my eye was just going to pop out of my head. I had this migraine for a month. I went to all the doctors, all the specialists, and they wanted to put a shunt in my spine. Oh my goodness. And I went to the chiropractor and he said, right here behind your neck on women, there's this gland and you just push it with your fingers and pull forward and you can feel all of that drain hmm. and your headache will go away I have allergies I do that every time I start to get an allergy headache it works no yeah. shunt in my spine hey yeah well anytime they want to do something invasive like that get a second opinion always <laughs> Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Go to my chiropractor for everything. <coughs> hey, I got this problem here. <laughs> You'll have a solution. Mm -hmm. It's wild. So, Marguerite, how are your spirits? Are you feeling okay? I mean, are you, you know, that be better? Um, I ha I'm still having some mobility issues. I actually fell off my front porch. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. Humpty Dumpty, just backwards. I, I I drove for the first time the day before I went back to work. That was a couple of weeks ago. And I was coming back. I drove just fine. Everything was great. But I couldn't make it up my, my steps. And I had no idea. I've never, ever, ever had issues. And I, I fell off my porch. My neighbors were outside. They come running over, picked me up, held me up the porch, and... Um, and I have a cane right now mm -hmm. that I use for steps. And when I get tired, my leg just buckled under me. I've never had that issue before. And uh, just things like that. I tire really easy. So I can't do the laundry and the dishes and vacuum and everything at the same time. And uh, I feel very old. <laughs> I'm getting better. My she's been back to work too with all this. Yeah. yeah. My sister came over the other day and she said, I'm so proud of you. You're wearing pants. Yay. <laughs> and shoes. <laughs> I found myself. I couldn't put my shoes on. Well, so. Mark, if you um if you find yourself feeling depressed, be sure and talk to your doctor 
because they are searching uh, depression being a side effect of COVID. I had pneumonia. I didn't have COVID. Oh, I thought you did. Okay. Mm -mm. I had it pneumonia and strep throat and diabetic ketoacidosis, which okay. was brought on by the steroid they gave me for the strep throat. And the, the ketoacidosis is what nearly killed me. Wow. Uh, yeah, I can understand that. Well, we're glad you're, we're glad you're where you are, <laughs> at least. My doctor's pretty happy. She keeps telling me I'm recovering so fast. I'm like, I can't walk up my stairs. And you're like, <laughs> I am not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Recovery sucks. It's really hard. We always want to go and do and just get right back at our life. And that's not fun when it doesn't work. No. Yeah, when my thyroid went out, I was pregnant with my second baby and I spent several months mostly just sitting in my recliner. Uh, it was horrible. And when they finally figured out what was the matter, I had to go through several months of physical therapy and just to be able to walk and put my pants on. And I know what you're talking about. So ask for some physical therapy because they've got amazing stuff they can do to strengthen you and do that thing. It might help with your equilibrium. Um, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Once my cough is under control, I'm gonna go back to my chiropractor and I think that will help a lot. I had to cancel because, oh, well, my husband canceled my appointment because I was in the ICU. Uh -huh. But uh, I don't feel like I should go back while I'm coughing my head off. It might scare the other patients. You should. You're not contagious. Go. You need it. You got to mm -hmm. get blood flow back to your head or you're not going to be able to think. I, I do need it. Mm -hmm. yeah, like... yeah, you do need it. Every time I go, it's like, wow, I got an instant brain power boost. I'm like, woohoo, because there's color in the world again. It's amazing. My back, my neck goes out really bad. I usually see my chiropractor once a month and I have for the last 19 years. She's amazing. Yeah. Well, get back to her and don't worry about, you know, the other people are concerned. You know, if you're wearing a, a mask, at least in the lobby or with around other people, that'll help them. And then just don't worry about it too much, you know, because it's not contagious. You don't have the, the crud. <laughs> no, I have negative you tests to prove it. Yeah. Right, and you want to feel better. Yeah, we got to get you feeling better. Well, guys, I'm going to go ahead and sign off here because I want to. Um, I want to be fresh tomorrow. <laughs> yes, I get it. Thank yeah. you, Diane. It was good to see you. Yeah, same here. Good to see you. And hey, when you move to Florida, though, don't be a stranger. No, I, I won't. No, I'm okay. still, still going to be involved. You know, We're still your friends, regardless of where you live. So, <laughs> Well, and if you come to Florida, be sure and look me up. <laughs> or or yeah, what? Yeah. I mean. Florida sounds like fun. Well, especially you know, about the end of November. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> first of December. Um, we were actually going to leave the first of November. Um, just to make sure we get out of here before it gets too cold. I, it anything below you know 55 seems cold to us and um anyway but then we sold the house and it's gonna take us a while to get everything out and get moved so yeah it'll be the end of november so will you have a good night and we will see you tomorrow see you diane okay bye bye Bye-bye. I think I'm going to go too. All yeah, right, you feel better. Go take care of yourself. We'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Oop, I have two animals at my feet. <laughs> and I'm trying not to kick anybody or step on any tails, fur, ears, or anything else. I'm just trying to figure out where I can set my feet down. It's a challenge. <laughs> the dog just rolled over. The cat <laughs> came behind my feet. <laughs> Tell her hi for me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>
So the speaking spots are 45 minutes, and I'm working on my PowerPoint presentation. Hopefully, I'll have that uh, to you by the morning, and just in case. The just in case slot, yeah. The just that's in fine. case, yeah. <laughs> just in case. In case slot. of emergency, pull this lever, uh, person. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> what I was thinking is maybe not do a PowerPoint since it's only 45 minutes and there can be questions easily on Zoom. Um, I could mm -hmm. do a little just a screen share while I'm inside. Yeah, board. that's fine. That is totally fine. It's however you want to rock it. If it comes, you know, if we need to call you in, uh, but yeah, it's fine. Either way you want to do it. Cool. I've been rocking that story origin. That is cool. I'm excited for you. Yeah. Oh, it's really been working. I took my list of 142 people that I got eight to 12 at a time at live events, you know, and I built it to uh, let me look right here and see what it is currently. I've got it integrated. So I currently have 373 newsletters. Nice. And Woo I have a 30% open rate and a 4.5% click rate. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's actually a lot better since I started using Story Origin, but some mm -hmm. of my older people are kind of dead. They don't really open. Mm -hmm. so. I understand because there's so many, uh, you know, uh, promotional type or whatever, and you just kind of go, archive, archive, I don't have time right now. So I understand. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, yeah, if you need me, I'm here. And I'll just open this up and... and uh, People don't seem to understand sometimes. I mean, you do obviously really well understand a newsletter list. But oh, it's I so do. Intimidating to most people, and I know I put it off for years because I thought, oh, that's just too complicated. It's too hard. Well, yeah. that's the one thing you should really learn how to do when yeah. you're trying to market and get. You that know, the thing. best thing I did was tell people think of it as as an update because newsletter just sounds like you got to have. 10 pages and blah 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 and all this stuff yeah, i think there's a total misconception about right me, yeah and it's like if it helps in your head to call it like an update you know or something like that uh a news flash whatever you know flash briefing anything like that that'll give the idea it doesn't have to be ad nauseum because people don't want to read eight or ten pages of stuff anyway for the most part i mean up until they want a story but like in a newsletter they don't necessarily want to go on and on and on and on and on right yeah but they want to pick they want pictures and they want clickable right. stuff and they want goodies and you know stories goodies and and quick things they can send me a little quote or whatever and and then it doesn't become quite so ah yeah <laughs> Well, my uh, newsletter, so I make good stuff, you know, on, on book, book, uh, uh, book brush and on Canva. So mm -hmm. do you take my newsletter? No, I don't. And it's only because You're I hardly read stuff. anybody's and I, it's yeah. not that I, yeah, no I would just be one of those that would not contribute to your open rate. <laughs> I I do. It's like I you know, too much else going on. I know that I wouldn't get to it very much. And sometimes I'll get on somebody's list, you know, because of their speaker or whatever. And I end up getting off. I'm like, it's I'm sorry. It's not that I don't love you, but it just, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've been having a lot of fun with it. And I just write short stuff like my opening paragraph is I can't believe this picture is so good. You're not going to believe this. And then their first thing. But my husband took this picture of the hunter's moon with a smartphone. And oh, so nice. I made a banner at Canva and it's cool looking. The moon is peeking out from behind the clouds and there's mm. all the shadow of the moon all around and the silvery stuff. And it's really pretty. And so then I featured, uh, I had an amazing playlist when I wrote Woman of the Stone. My favorite was Hunter by Dido. You can listen to it at YouTube by clicking here and visit my book table. So there's my newsletter. And then I have a thank you for my street team. I'm going to be on uh, Shannon Bruffett's uh, uh, radio show. 
Nice. Yeah. So, and then I've got uh, three things that I choose from Story Origin to do swaps with. Mm -hmm. And then I feature one of my books. And that's it. There's my newsletter. Yeah, I mean, it's not that horrible, huge amount of work when you, especially the other thing is that people don't realize is that if you have like a template or a format, like I'm going to put in uh, a picture, a quote, the three swaps, the whatever, and then you just have like boom, 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 boom. And then it's not so hard because you're not like inventing the entire thing from a blank page. Yeah. Well, you have a I rotate too, and I will put in, uh, I like to put in little creative nonfiction pieces, but I'll say, here's the story, what it's about, and have a graphic, and then you got to skip to the bottom to read it. So right. everything else that's important, if you didn't, weren't interested, you could just click on the stuff you wanted to see and then skip mm -hmm. reading it. But yeah, and I've started using an emoji in my tagline or in the, line at the of your email you know mm -hmm. it seems to get better click rate when you have a really well placed emoji like in the subject line mm -hmm. yeah yeah cool. so i have a a couple weeks ago i sent out one it was my piece uh, crocodile and it was about repelling <laughs> it's a good yeah, little cool. memoir essay you know creative nonfiction. And so I put a crocodile right up there. Everybody was intrigued about that. <laughs> I'm sure they were, because it's yeah. not a thing you would associate necessarily. So that's yeah. cool. With me, I mean, yeah, that, that's what the repelling instructor gave me that nickname, because I went Australian style face forward off the open face mm -hmm. on my first day of repelling. Cool. Yeah. It, for crocodile dundee yep this was this date me a little bit. i understand crocodile dundee yeah i remember yeah. i saw that that was a fun movie yeah <laughs> all right well i'm gonna have to en enlist your aid after you've rested a little bit from all this owl stuff to <laughs> move my list off of mailchimp they're being sold and i don't know what's gonna happen to them and i'd like oh to mailer list yeah, I have them on Mailer Light, and it's pretty easy. Yeah, Mailer Light. It's yeah, you're going to just uh, I mean I'll walk you through it later, but you're just going to go get from Mailchimp your RSV CSV file. file, download your yeah, download your CSV file, and then um, you know you're going to go over into Mailer Light and pop it up in there, okay. and uh, and you'll be just fine. It will be pretty the seamless. Trick is going to be my integrations on my website. I might need your expertise if you're any good at that yeah i can probably help you but they have really good tutorials i'm not saying i won't help you but right right, right. Yeah. but i'm just saying they do have some pretty good tutorials and as far as integration you, when you click i'm pretty sure the tab is called integrations and then you can you know see what it is that you need and they walk you through it and they have really good um, little videos and um, they put mm -hmm. out some good information you know, they send you a message every couple of weeks about, you know, tips and tricks and whatever that help you grow your list. So, yeah. Yeah. I stopped cool. using MailChimp a while back because they just got pretty crazed. They've improved things. things a lot. They've done a lot to improve it, and, and, but I still want to move. Yeah. Well, they got more expensive and they changed some of their rules and on MailChimp, you know, maybe they then changed them back because a lot of us probably went, no, bye. <laughs> Yeah, I don't <laughs> so know. maybe they changed again i i just felt kind of trapped because i have all my integration cards set up and i'm not quite confident that i can fix them you'll probably be fine uh, do you have um plugins on your blog with mailchimp plugins on my do you have your your website oh, yeah, your my blog? website my blog yeah all of my pop-ups are with through um what do they call it bloom oh okay I have that because i have divi the lifetime thing with you'll divi. just have to make sure and change some of your codes if you you know if you had to put in a code for mailchimp you'll have to switch it off and remember all those little doodahs when you're doing the switch but uh-huh but yeah it, it should work out fine so when i take my csv file over does it take all my rankings like all my stats and stuff or is that going to mess it all up I mean, it doesn't really matter, but no, it's not about stats. That's for your contact, you know, name, email, when they signed up, 
those kind uh -huh. of things that stuff can come over i don't know what other rankings you mean but... open rates and stuff like that. oh no that doesn't come oh okay. no because you'll start over you know it'll be a new set of open rates on the new platform so just do a okay. screen grab or do whatever you know before you go for what it was at the end of the old uh -huh. and get a sense of what they are because then you'll be getting open rates will be calculated based on your current data well, they're going to be a lot higher if i just start from fresh because like i say the old emails were not well received i wasn't sending them often enough right. for people to be used to opening and, and they were you know they were just people that signed up at, at events in the community so yeah and so then you can always just uh, ask them if they still want to be involved and if they do then you can add those emails over otherwise you're you know, if you bring a dead list over to a new platform, it'll still be a dead list. Yeah. So it's not going to help your open rates to just to switch platforms. If the same people that didn't open the emails at MailChimp, they're not going to open them at MailerLite. That's everybody's complaint about MailChimp because I can't tell who's actually open. Oh, no. yeah, that's one of the reasons I left them. I guess they didn't change that. It's like you couldn't tell who opened and who didn't. And on MailerLite, you can. Yeah. And uh you know, and that so that helps just makes it a bit easier. Yeah, because I can get rid of them over there if I can just see who has actually ever opened. Now, well, um, and the other thing, like I say, that you can do is say, you know, like you know how you get those things in the mail. This could be your last catalog. You know, <laughs> yeah, this could be your last email. Hey, open for this free gift or whatever, and give them a something. And if they don't bother and and um, you know, click through or whatever. Um, that might give you some ideas because, like I say, otherwise you just don't know. And if you have 150 people who hardly ever open your emails on Mailchimp, it will yeah. be the same over there. Just you'll know who they are, but yeah. <laughs> no and the other. But yeah, I guess I can be segment this. all the two star people and email them. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that much you could do. And then if they seem to be pretty dead you say look i'm i'm taking you off this list in seven days unless you reply or something and that so, way they that you would know yeah so when i take the csv file does that take everything out of mailchimp or just leaves it there it's just a copy no it right? leaves it there it's just a copy it's just so like if i reroute copy. all my input from say story origin i change my integration to yeah you got to change your integrations everywhere that you would have had mailchimp you have to swap uh -huh. it out so that makes sure that you make a good listing of where you had what uh -huh. you know so that you don't for because it's you know it's kind of like when you change your cell phone number and like eight months later you realize that you forgot to tell like your bank or something <laughs> oh. <laughs> or your auntie yeah. that you only talk to three times a year and you go I tried to call you and then I was like, oh, just give me my new number. It's just like that, you know, like it's not that you mean to, but it'd be really easy to, to forget. Oh, yeah, that's right. Over on so and so, you know, I had the link to join my email list on MailChimp. And so kind of try to make a list if you have any links on social that go straight to a an opt in form or whatever, you know, all those things you're going to want to swap out once you get your mailer light set up. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's exhausting sometimes, but it's like, but once you have it done, it's fine. It's just like if you start to list where those things are now um, before you're actually trying to do it, then at least you can make a, a checklist. OK, did I change it on whatever MeWe or whatever? Yes. OK, did I change it here? Did I change it there? And you can just keep it track of it that way. Cool. Looks like Kelly Kirby came. Oh, hey, me. Kelly Kirby. And her mic's off, but she says, sorry, she's so late. Oh, well, you are very late, but we're still happy. We're just chatting. You're welcome to unmute and chat with us. Most yeah. everybody else has gone off to bed or whatever. <laughs> and I'm going to go eat soon, but we're just chatting. Hey, hey. Hi. I'm so Hi. sorry. I'm so sorry. I was, I've been so busy. <laughs> it's That's not okay. Busy. I'm, I'm a quilter also. So um, I've, I've been busy making quilts. It's my busy time of year. And oh how fun so, so i kind of so got caught up in that and totally forgot i get it i'm a card maker and there's a couple of people in one of my card groups that 
makes cards that are based off of quilting pattern ideas. I mean, it's cards, it's paper, but it's based off of quilting patterns and stuff. It's pretty cool. Oh, I, this, I, I have loads of work right now and I'm trying to balance, which is really hard. Uh, tell uh, me about it. Mm -hmm. so, cool. so what can you can you can you patch me up or is there a link I can go to to catch up on what I missed? Yeah, the um, Facebook on our Ozarks Writers League Facebook page in the members only group and in the open group and on my Facebook profile, all those places right now, we're still live streaming. <laughs> so um, it's all up there. You can catch whenever you would like. And, and then I hope you can join us tomorrow for the conference. You can always uh -huh. listen in quilt or whatever. <laughs> I, I am I am going to try to. Um, I, I, tomorrow morning, I have to put together a 12-foot quilting machine. Uh, so, <laughs> so I'm going to try to get up early in the morning and do that. And then, and I don't then know exactly what that means, but it sounds 12 foot of it sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> um, it, it's 10 page, it's 10 instruction pages long with lots of little pieces and I'm not looking forward to it. Wow. Oh, we have a pack of coyotes and dogs singing outside. Oh, how fun. <laughs> so Kelly, if, Kelly Kirby is a member, right? So he, I mm -hmm. put in the chat the the link to the playlist. If that's I, it. I see that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Now this this one isn't in that playlist at the moment because this is an you know an open free event. But the playlist will have all of the talks that were from like that summer did and that I did and the other people and and the spring conference and tomorrow's fall conference will be in there and those you'll be able to see from that members link, which is the, what's the one nice thing about doing a Zoom is it's really easy to just go ahead and record each of the segments separately into a playlist for members. Okay, okay. So those I'll things will it. show up tomorrow. If I have a chance, I might download this thing and put it up in there too, but it is, this tonight is a free open to the public type event. So that's the only reason it's being shared everywhere. The, the members meeting tomorrow is not shared everywhere except your private playlist. Oh, but okay. the link is the same. So you can come in mm -hmm. to Zoom tomorrow and the same link. Yes, so that's, that's good. Oh, okay. That, that, that's wonderful then. I, I, I don't want to miss anything tomorrow. Nope. And tonight you got an email again at six o'clock that had, you know, the links, uh, the raffle prizes, the agenda, everything is, yes. you know, kind of all in there and you'll be able to catch up on that and and each of those segments I will be putting separately into the uh, YouTube playlist and that way um, you don't have to listen through their search through you know six hours of stuff it'll all be separated well did did you summer did did Rhonda did you did you both enter the contest uh the writing contest I, I was too busy with other deadlines and I didn't this year. <laughs> and I'm so sorry you didn't. <laughs> yeah, it was, you know, a lot a of couple of, it was really yeah. fun to watch everybody. There's a couple of people who only entered one or two things like Ronnie Burnish. I think she entered either one or two items and uh, she won one of them. Oh, and wow. so, and you know, some people might have entered, you know, 10 contests and they might have won one or two or five or whatever. Larry Wood won a bunch and Billy Skelly won a bunch and Bonnie Annie Smith, Tesh. Bonnie Tesh. Uh, you know, there's some people that won quite a few things. I had some pretty fat envelopes going out with all kinds of certificates when I mailed them out this morning. <laughs> well, I, I, I did my, my one entry. Uh, I did one entry and, I, and I, it was kind of tongue in cheek. Mm -hmm. And uh, it may or may not have won anything. And it may have gone in the trash. <laughs> <laughs> well, we do have to get rid of all the entries afterwards. So they all go in the trash in that sense, but not like <laughs> just because, you know, we destroy the, uh, I, I erase all the digital files to the best that, that I can. And anything on paper uh, goes in the burn barrel. I have the copies of the poetry entries and they, they go in the burn barrel, but mm -hmm. Well, I, but I, that's I, because we're protecting people's work. It's not because we hate you or something. <laughs> of, of course, of course. No, I, no, I, I understand. I, 
I, I was writing, you know, and I'm and I'm trying to write my my book right now, and I'm having nightmares when I write, and I don't know if that's a normal thing, and I, and I, it's like I write and then I go to bed and then I have nightmares and then I wake up and then I'm like. I gotta stop and then I'll go back and I'll like edit something out and I'm like oh no 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 stop editing before you finish writing mm-hmm. well, are you writing a really creepy story no well it, it's not creepy it's um it's it's tra- it's traumatic I, I should oh. say well I it's, say you've got some anxiety going now, what yeah. I do to combat my anxiety, because I have anxiety too. I think everybody these days has gotten a touch of that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I listen to the scriptures uh, while I'm just checking my email and doing everything. So I'll listen to a couple of chapters of scripture. And then, you know, it just centers me, focuses me, and I feel so much better. My anxiety goes down. I also do some exercises and things Mm -hmm. I just just do those that routine before I start writing and man it really helps me so you got to find whatever's good for you and healthy for you and makes Mm -hmm. you feel better absolutely do something and don't write right before bed if it's traumatic stuff if you can help it I know sometimes time-wise that's not always but you know it's like if you're writing about trauma and then you're going to sleep right away if you can at least do something in between, have a walk. I do what I call a heart breath. So I, you know, focus in on my heart center and like breathe love in and through and out and share that. And that kind of thing, whenever, if I'm anxious, um, it really helps to center, you know, and if you like scriptures or you have a certain meditation or a- anything that goes along with that, that's just really bringing God's love into you and through you and out so that it's like this beautiful cycle that, so anything that, of that, that maybe, that's yeah. that's very true and I, I need to remember that I need to remember that thank you thank yeah you so I think much. we put a lot of pressure on ourselves especially when we have a deadline or or you know we just feel all this stress over it and taking that 10 15 20 minutes to decompress before you start mm-hmm. and relax it really helps um fill your cup you, first yeah fill your cup fill your we cup. always forget yeah, that as women i think yeah no fill your cup and and if you're writing because it, it's like and especially if you feel like gosh the story needs to be told and needs to get out in the world or whatever then sometimes you're putting a pressure on yourself oh i gotta get this thing out that'll help people yeah but you still can't give from an empty cup that is no. that is so true. I, I never really really thought of it in that way. I I don't I don't want to go too much into this what, what I'm writing about, but my my mother in law is part of this process, and my my mother in law, um, we had shared some things a few years ago, and and she said, you know, she said maybe this is God's way of of telling you um you know to to write this so that so that it's a voice for not just you and not just for me it's a voice for a lot of people and and i said i don't really think know that i want that kind of (laughs) to to write that kind of story but it is what it is and and I I keep coming back to it I I walk away and I think no I can't do this but then I keep coming back to it it's like I can't put it down either well God wouldn't want you to do it in a way that would mean you took poor care of yourself or that you were harming yourself you know God wouldn't want that for you it would need to be done in a way that still can nourish you while you're doing that important work so that's why it becomes so important like you know i said to fill your cup you know reading scriptures any of those things that are going to help you make a a difference and know that because i know i've had a lot of things lately that it just you're working on something and the timing isn't what you'd like and it's like i know it's all in god's timing it'll get there and 
and that's hard to remember sometimes too. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is, but it's helpful to be reminded. Thank you. Thank you all for reminding <laughs> me of that, but you, you have to stop and step back a little bit. You do. Take a breath. Yeah. I've got this little marble from Moab, Utah. Mm. And it's really pretty. It looks like kind of like uh, Jupiter or something. Oh, that's cool. It looks like a planet. Yeah. Yeah, it's really pretty. It's got all the different colors and swirled on there. Well, I just use it to kind of massage my hands. Mm -hmm. Boy, that relaxes me. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have this really pretty smooth sandstone. Let's put it here where you might be able to see it. Oh, it's flat rocks. Nice. And I just rub that along my hands and my fingers. Mm -hmm. And you would just, you'd be surprised how much that relaxes you. So just mm -hmm. find little things, maybe scalp massager or back scratcher. I don't know. Just I have some different fidgets. Yeah, I have some different fidgety things. I'm trying to find one of them in my desk drawer, which is just a little accordion of paper. I do have a nice smooth stone. I have a couple of aromatherapy. There is my paper. It's not. It's nothing exciting. It's just sometimes you need to fiddle with something. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. you know. And I really like. Um, I like peanuts with Snoopy and and Charlie mm -hmm. Brown and stuff. So whenever I need a laugh, I just bobble Snoopy's head, and it looks like he's laughing, just like mm -hmm. on the television. I like that. Gather good things around you and relax and do some gentle exercises. And I noticed instead of, you know, going for the chocolate or something, I have this three pound weight and I'll just do arm exercises, boost my brain power and my focus, do that every 20 minutes to an hour and I can write for longer. Yep. I, I think I, I get lost in, in my quilt making because I get... Uh, because it's a process that requires you to think and you uh -huh. have to like push everything else out of your mind in order it to could be it. a meditation yeah, yeah that sounds yeah. meditative so your yeah. subconscious is still working yeah while so, you're doing that uh, yeah so I, I I get into quilt mode and I'm making trap quilts right now that I will end up giving to the homeless um I give them to an organization here and they, they donate oh. them uh, before it gets cold. And, That's cool. And, and what I, most of these quilts are like really easy because I want to get them done in a hurry. But there's some that I work on, like I work on for family and then I, I give away to family and they're really complicated. And so I really have to think about what I'm doing. So it, it pulls me out of, it pulls me out of, out of you know if I'm I'm worried about something or if I if I can't like if I'm in the story and I, I can't get something right it's like okay I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna I'm gonna start cutting and sewing and refocus my mind somewhere mm -hmm. else and so that that's my that, that I think that's my meditative I think the problem is I get lost in it mm -hmm. and don't want to stop <laughs> I understand that you're good at hyper focus. So am I. I get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 so it's like I, I get tucked into that. And well, like in the last three weeks, I've made like five quilts. Oh my goodness! Wow, yeah. that's a, five quilts no. in three weeks. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> it is amazing. It's like. I bow I to you. I know your cameras. I bow to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't know what awesome. I do to avoid what I do to avoid writing. And this is when I'm super stressed. I clean the house. I was telling mm -hmm. Rhonda and everybody tonight because they asked me how I <laughs> was doing with my creativity. I said, my house is a wreck. I'm doing great. <laughs> exactly. Oh, uh, it's I remember Dusty Richards and I don't know if if you all know him. Um, but at one point he did a workshop some years ago for Al and he said, now, if you want to write, you've just got to learn that dust bunnies are cute. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I say. Every time I see a dust bunny or a fluff ball from my dog, my carpet needs vacuumed in the worst way. And I'm like, I'm just too darn busy to worry about it. So yeah, dust bunnies are cute. <laughs> dust bunnies are right. cute. <laughs> I love it. Russell. Cute enough, you give him names. Yeah, that was Dusty. He was pretty funny sometimes. Yeah, it was. 
Uh, well, uh, uh, as as I as I as I because I do quilting sometimes as a job because I do get paid for it. I do mm -hmm. have clients. Um, I say uh, I say I don't clean anything because I I will lose something I might need. Um, mm -hmm. And I've lost my scissors and my snips and mm -hmm. and things. And I'm like I, I don't clean. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and so we we just came back we came back from we went to visit our son um COVID has kept us away from uh, the Navy uh and he's out because he works in a hospital and so we haven't seen him in almost two years mm -hmm. so we just got back from seeing him and uh and it was wonderful to visit and so it's kind of like I'm trying to get back into the swing of things and I feel like my mind is just I'm like, and then I was like, and my husband was like, when is your writer's league uh, meeting? When's the fall <laughs> meeting? And I'm like, wait, what did you just say? And he was like, don't you have a fall meeting this week? And I'm like, oh God, it's right now. And, I'm <laughs> and, and he was like, okay, well, I'm going to bed. And I'm like, I got to go log into Facebook and I got to log into the I got to get into the link to get here. So here I am. I'm late oh. and I feel awful because I'm scatterbrained. Oh, no, I'm just it. glad oh. you came. I'm glad you came. It's been fun to just hang, visit with people. We don't get enough of that. Yeah, absolutely. I just bought this wall organizer at the thrift store for $12.99. Hang on, awesome. organizers. It's got a, a whiteboard calendar got a cork board it's got this uh you can put papers in and it's got the nice yeah i'm getting organized and tonight while i was listening to everybody read their stories and do all that i cleaned my desk <laughs> oh wow yeah i like a neat desk i mean my house may be full of dog hair but <laughs> my desk is neat <laughs> I, I can't promise any of that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't promise any of that. I know, I, Kelly. I, I, I'm sorry. Piled up. Well, I you know I used to have that a lot of that too. Oh, one tip I was going to share with you, Kelly, because you said you get all focused in your uh, quilting and stuff. Is if, if you're ever stuck on whether it's a part of the book or something else. You know, like think on it for a minute and then go, okay, I'm going to lay it aside and go do your quilting. And you tell your brain, okay, listen, brain, I'm going to go off and do life. You work on this. When you got something, you get back to me. I'm going to forget about it until then. And it's amazing how, you know, it's tapping into what God put inside of all of us has a lot of natural abilities, you know, we can tap into. And it's amazing how things will just all of a sudden you might be you might hear a line in a TV show or of a song or somebody might say something to you in the store and it like triggers and flips the switch and you're like, oh, I got it. And it's amazing how that can happen. Just let your brain kind of work on it while you're off living life and doing other things. That that is true. I, I will hear something. And I, I will say, I, like, well, today, uh, or maybe it was yesterday, I heard a quote. It was from a TV. It's from a TV show that's not even on anymore. And I thought, you know what? That is so, so true. And I, I have got to, I have got to write that down because it, it kind of just falls into where I was, where I was thinking about. So I've got it written down. And it, I, I'm not going to plagiarize anybody, of course, because that's a bad thing and I'm not going to do that. But I thought, you know what? That's part of where my character is at. It's, it's like the line is something like, um, it, it's the, it, there's a, the, the line between what drives us and what kills us <laughs> is a lot smaller than we know yeah oh, you know, I like that you know it, it, it was just like I was like you know that is so true it, that it, is wow that's a great line you can still incorporate it just give the uh uh you know wherever it was from but yeah I, that's a great line yeah no well, I, it really is and I thought you know that is so true it's that that line and I was like because because and and you know that just sort of applies to the character and it and, and sort of applies to everything that you know is kind of going on and uh and I was just like 
oh wow okay so I've got it written down you know and 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 so I'm like that's that's going to have to go somewhere I don't know how or where yeah. but it's going because it just it just hit me that it it it, it just it's profound in its simplicity mm-hmm. I guess you could say yeah. And so, yeah, so that, that's, that was one of those little things and I'll, I'll, I'll be in the car or something and, and I'll, I'll be like, oh, wait, oh my gosh, I just saw something here. Let me write down. Mm-hmm. Thank God. My husband's driving, of course. Well, yeah, I figured so. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, I, I'm, I'm hoping to find a little better balance coming up. Definitely. Well, I've written five books now. Well, I work, one of them's the anthology, but um, finally found the connecting theme because I was selling books to people and talking to everybody about my books at uh, the Maple Leaf Festival in Carthage last weekend. And I finally figured it out. I'm like, oh, wow. It's, it's, it's the tagline for my new book. And it's when forces split them apart, how do they come together? That's what I write. Overcoming all these forces that divide us. All this, uh, I'm not that, laughing at you. I'm laughing because <laughs> I went, well, that's exactly what Summer writes. And you read, read that tagline somewhere. And I thought, like, I thought you knew that. I didn't. <laughs> what I you hadn't write. put it together yet. I thought <laughs> it was just for this one book. And I didn't realize hey that's what I write for all of them and and so five books into this <laughs> right well yeah that's, that's what drives funny. me yeah it's like that's what drives you that's where you know there we all have some kind of uh of inner guidance that's you know directing what we choose to write even if the books happen to be pretty different or the stories you know so that's cool I'm glad you finally well, I've been looking that for that right. all this time and I, finally... <laughs> I didn't know that I would have told you <laughs> Yeah, my new series is called Fusion in a Fusion World. And that sums it like up too. And I came up with that. Yeah. I like <laughs> well, that I mean, too. There's a lot more energy in fusion than there is in fission. We just haven't yes. figured out how to uh to harness. Well, and yeah, also fission is a more tearing apart and fusion is more coming together and yeah, yeah, that's what and making something different. And there's a, a lot of different sorts of fusion of of uh, ideas and technologies and different things you know that's coming up so that's cool yeah fusion yeah. creates something more complicated and vision breaks something complicated. breaks it down mm-hmm. so hey, one yeah. is like entropy and the other is creation mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, all right ladies i better call it i'm gonna time. Yeah, I'm going to say, I want to head out because I actually could yeah. use a little food, but it was so much fun. Yeah, I've been running the show. I was like, how to eat. So um, you guys take care. This was really fun to do some extra visiting and look forward to catching up with you guys tomorrow. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Tomorrow. It's nice to meet you, Summer. Nice to meet you too, Kelly. <laughs> Bye. Good night. See you later, ladies. Bye-bye, y'all. Enjoy your dinner. Good night. Yeah, thanks. <laughs>